Hello everybody, my name is Markiplier and welcome to Doki Doki Literature Club! Now you guys have been asking me to play this game for a while now, and I finally have an opportunity to get here, and uh... Well, apparently it's not everything that it seems to be, but me, having played a lot of Yandere Simulator, can kind of see through the cutesy outside, and I probably know that this is gonna go very badly for me. But, I'm gonna play it! My name is Markip- Markip- Markipoopy. It's- it's your boy. It's your boy Markipoopy. Come in- nah, that's a terrible name. Merkel Flumfly. Flumfly. Mer- ma- Mamkel Flumby. Mer- Mer- Ma- Makapa. Ma- Me- Ming- Minkle- Ming- 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 Moor- <laughs> It's your boy, Morp. <laughs> hey, it's Morp. Hey guys, it's Morp. Alright, Morp coming down the street. Hey! Is that more Pussy? Alright, you know it is. You know. I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but it started around high school she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's gonna chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Ha 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 ha! I overslept again! Oh, But I caught you this time! <laughs> Morp! Maybe, but only because Morp decided to stop and wait for you. Oh, you say like that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, Morp. <laughs> That's mean. Well, if you- if people stare at you for acting weird, then Morp don't want to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. Whatever you say. <laughs> We cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Morp, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? Morp don't join no club! Morp told you already! Morp not interested in joining any clubs! Morp haven't been looking either. Oh, that's not true! You told me you would join a club this year! Did Morp? I'm sure it's possible that Morp did, in one of our many conversations where Morp dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Sayori likes to worry a little too much about Morp. When Morp perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending Morp's free time on games and anime. I mean, Morp like do nothing else. Uh huh. I was talking about how I'm worried about you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know? And I know you're happy now, but I died the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. You trust me, right? Don't worry, don't make me keep worrying about you. Alright, alright. Morp will look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Morp, don't make promises. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, Morp guess Morp will promise you that. Yay! Why do I- why do Morp let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? Maybe because she's cute. More than that, Morp is surprised Morp even let myself re Morp self relent to her. Morp guess seeing her worry so much about me makes Morp want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. Mehead. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before Morp know it. After Morp pack up the Morp things, Morp stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice. I'm gonna stop with the Morp thing. <laughs> Cause it's- it's one, hard to keep up with, and two, really, really annoying. I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello! Sayori. Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's gonna make you stay late for your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know... No what? Well, that you could come to my club! Sayori, that's the stupidest idea I've ever heard of! There's no way I'm going to your club. Oh, meanie. 
Sayori is vice president of the Literature Club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Morp like anime! Morp think anime, the future of entertainment! Come on, please! Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday that I would bring a new member, and Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep! Morp can't keep picking up after you! I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she's so cunning as to have planned all this out. I let out a long sigh. <sighs> Fine, Morp will stop by for a cupcake. But that's it! Morp not gonna get more more! Yes, let's go! Something tells me this literature club ain't gonna be too good for my health. And thus today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone! The new member is here. I told you, don't call me new member. My name is Morp. Eh? I glance around the room. Girl one, welcome to Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. You got purple hair. You're probably evil. Sayori always says nice things about you. Seriously? You brought a boy? You've got pink hair. You're even more evil than her. <laughs> That's just my guess. Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, oh, Morp! What a nice surprise! You're gonna die first. I can tell this. Evil, eviler, gonna die. That's how it works. Let's see. Welcome to the club. Uh, all words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. <laughs> Works out perfectly for me. Morp like cute girls. <laughs> what are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. S sorry. Natsuki. <laughs> The girl with the sour attitude whose name is apparently Natsuki is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She is also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly in my ear, then turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Don't say things like that. <laughs> I'm not smart at all. I'm incredibly dumb. Come on now. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Ah, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? <laughs> That's right! Monica here, it's great to see you again, Morp. Monica's- that's a weird pose to strike after that. Why is your skirt all flowing upwardly? Hmm, something seems magically bouncy about you. We do know each other? Well, we rarely talk, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic, there's something evil about her. It's almost like she sold her soul for all these wonderful things. Basically, completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... You, <laughs> you too, Monica! You too! <laughs> you too! Come sit down, Morp. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Is this gonna be a choice? Do I have to choose? I'm gonna, ch I'm gonna save real quick here. There we go. Hey, I made them! I'll get them! Sorry, I get a little too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? I'm the mature and smart one, apparently. <laughs> the girls have a few desks arranged for a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there's one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. <laughs> I get to choose. I get to choose. I get to choose. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room, where Natsuki grabs the wrap tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take Oh, come on! Come on, more better than that! Oh, come on! Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? No, I'm not. Okay, ta-da! Okay. Whoa! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. I like how- I like how Sayori's reaction came before the actual reveal. Like, it was just a plate with foil over it and she's just like, Wow! Oh, wow! Wow! And then lift it off and there's the actual cakes and doesn't matter. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make the ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. Haha, <laughs> well, you know. I don't know. Just hurry and take one. 
Sierra grabs one first, then Monica, I follow. It's delicious! I haven't even eaten it yet, but it's good! Sierra talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. What a klutz. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. I bite the head right off of that cat. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. Oh, the icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. It's really good. Morp like this. Mm -hmm. Morp like icing. Is this sugar? Um, mm -hmm. good stuff. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I. Oh, is that a is that a Sundere character? <laughs> okay, haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything? Huh, I thought you technically did. Sayori said. Well, maybe it's not like I'm in love with you or anything. Oh, god damn it! Whatever, but not for you. You, you know, you dummy. You know, I don't know. Oh god. I'm so cute. All right, all right, okay. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the tsundere conversation, or as I call it, the tsundere conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places the teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? You're so sophisticated. I like that. I like that a lot. Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Yes, I like reading. I like reading a lot, I really do. Andy Weir just came out with a new book. He, he's the guy that made The Martian. Have you read that one? I haven't read it yet, but it seems pretty good. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. <laughs> don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. I can see that, and it's working on Morp. Morp very impressed. All right. No, nah, that's not. Uh, insulted Yuri looks away. I mean, that, you know, I believe you. <laughs> I believe you. I believe you're trying to impress me. I believe that. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but at least I enjoy tea. I'm glad. I'm glad, too. Okay. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. <laughs> Morp faintly smiles to himself in a rousal. <laughs> Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, what made you consider Literature Club? I didn't! Morp was forced here by Sayuki! Ah, uh, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica I was practically- Oh, Sayori. Dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everybody. Ah, okay, when does the murder start? Cause I heard there was murder. There any murder here? Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you the leader of the debate club last year? Oh, there you go with that pose again. I don't like you. I've decided you're the evil one. You're the evil one. I don't like you. Well, you know, to be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about bub bub bublets and blah 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 I'd rather make something something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it something. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. I see you holding hands under there. Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best! You know it! More also part of this! More also want to be part of this! More also excited! Ugh. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Morp also excited and interested in goal, but also Morp a boy. <laughs> Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they're also delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Morp, what things do you like to read? Oh, I read Warhammer. Like a lot of Warhammer 40k. I like that universe. It's very good. Me following it very closely. Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I really don't have a good way of answering that. I like The Martian by Andy Weir. He's a good author. He's only written one book. Two now. I need to read the second book. Morp, Morp like manga. <laughs> I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. 
Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wanted to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not, not much of a reader, I guess. I like the pictures. The pictures are good for Morp. Morp-like pictures. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her fingers. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, there it is. Uh, I read a- Morp read a horror book once. Once upon a time. It was good. And scary. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Morp likes the thing more better than rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. I'm not very gentle after all. <laughs> but if a story makes me think, or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world. If only for a brief moment. Oh, I hate horror. <laughs> oh, why's that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right. You usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? You're just a one big stereotype, aren't you? What? What? What gives you the right? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called Don't say it out loud, please! I'm super embarrassed. And give that back. Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcake, your poems, everything about you is just as cute as you are. Sayori sidles up behind Natsuki and puts her hand on her shoulders. I'm not cute! I'm into hardcore death metal! I've got a scar! I branded myself with a hot iron once! I'm into BDSM! Don't judge me, I'm not cute! Ah. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Eh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No, no, no. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them or anything. Not like I wrote them for you anyway, or nothing like that. I'm uh, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing one to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Yuri, you're scaring me. S very scary. I don't like that kind of talk there. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, she can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Uh, oh, I wanted to read everyone's poems. Oh, we all sit in silence for a moment. Okay. Okay, here's my lean. I have an idea, everyone. Eh? Natsuki, oh, I, I feel a decision's coming up. Hang on. Let's save again. I'm a spastic saver. Okay, let's all go home and write poems of our own. Uh, Yeehaw! Then next time we meet, we'll all share them with one another. That way, everyone is even. Oh! Uh, yeah, let's do it! Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Morp? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. And hey, what's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club! Music cut. So you already must have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. Music sudden slam cut. I still have other cuts clubs to you, Luke, <laughs> clubs to look at, and um, I lose my train of thought. Oh, all four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But I'm sorry, I thought. <laughs> More. <laughs> More. <laughs> like that's just her sound effect she makes when she's sad. Just more, 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 more. You, you all. I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. 
I'll join the literature club and seal my fate to certain doom. Hey! One by one, the girl's lights eye, eyes light up. Yes! I'm so happy! Sari wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey! You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. Then there's my lean. Then <laughs> that makes it official. Huh. All right. Welcome to the literature club. Ah, uh -huh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. It was about to be a terrible note, and I would have had to murder some people, but okay. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. More. I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Oh, I'm gonna express more self so good. <laughs> ah, sorry, I have severe spina bifida. Or yeah, yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Among other emotions. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, Morp, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right, Sayori and I never walk home together anymore because she's always stayed school after the after school for clubs. Sure, might as well, I guess. Yahoo! Yahoo! And with that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way back home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Ah. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in literature club? Perhaps I'll have a chance to glow closer to one of these girls. <laughs> All right, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. But I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Oh boy, I can't wait. Gonna save. Some bad's about to happen. I can tell. It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Oh, 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 oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, all right, okay, all right. Okay, all right. Boo. <laughs> Boop. Oh, wait, no. Oh, wait, no. Boop. Ah. Uh, sticky. Damn it. God damn it. Ah. Uh, fear. Fear. Ah. Uh, agonizing. Ah. Uh, with some, um. Uh, um uh, parfait. Ah. Destiny! Ah, uh, um, well, uh, flee! Ah, uh, boom, a double, a double, a nightgown! Ah, um, 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 a covet! I am incongruent! I'm a um, 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 uh, I like spinning! I'm a um, uh, nibble! I'm a um, 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 hop! I'm a um, explode! I'm a um, 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 Bum bum. Ah, bo 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 bo. Frightening. I'm gum bum bum bum. Fester. And I'm um gum bum bum. Uncanny. Hello, bum bum. Kawaii. I'm bum bum. Tenacious. I love my mom. My mom. Head bum 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 bum. Vivacious. Vivacious indeed. Ah! Hi again, Morp! Did I do good? I made a poem! It makes no goddamn sense! Someone write down my poem in the comments below. It's so good. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> okay. Now, nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but it'll at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at Literature Club. I was the last to come in, so everybody else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Morp. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on! Like he deserves any slack! Sierra told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year! Oh, is that true? And last year, too! I don't know if you plan to co just come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. That's... that's... that's threatening. Okay. Okay, hi, Monica. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. <gasps> Oh, m m m b b b b b Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Mon Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Morp always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. So let's all show him a good time, I guess. He helps me with busy work without even me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room, <laughs> helping me bathe. 
How dependable. Ah, yes. Yes, I am that adjective. Dependable. Amongst excruciating and vivacious. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy, it's distracting. And you always- almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> well, you know, live and learn, then get loves. You two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. <laughs> oh, Yuri, don't- don't worry, don't worry. There's m more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> if you know- if you, oh, if you know- uh, never mind. How come you and Morp can become good friends too? Um, oh, I don't know about that, Sayori. Huh? Oh, as usually, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know? Wait, Sayori! Eh, uh, me? Morp? For Morp? Uh, not really. Don't be shy, come on, it's really nothing. What is it? Never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Oh, you silly Billy? Oh, uh, what do I do? I'm sorry, Yuri, I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it! Nailed it. Solved it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. Second of all, anything you give me, I'd immediately reject. Just because I'm that kind of person. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what, because I'm at a, such a low level of happiness that anything's up from here. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be, no matter how shitty your present is. Alright. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it'll keep- it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. Oh, this is- How is this girl accidentally being so cute? Oh. Ha ye! Wowie wowie. Okay. All right. She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this maybe. I enthusiastically take a book. I'd be more excited about this, but I already promised I wouldn't be. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sari and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around a closet. Oh, great! I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. Is a choice coming up? Where's the goddamn choices happening here? I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. This looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah, crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me, and her eyes meet for a split second. <gasps> it's a fate. Are we about to zing? Oh. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in the book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. On your beautiful face. I mutter this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place your beautiful eyes. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so that's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some stuff of it so it was fresh in my mind for when we discuss it. D discuss it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious. How come you have two copies of the same book? Ah, uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday. Ah, uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decide to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon! I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. About death? Is that so? What's it about anyway? Well, death! Yes. Hmm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright. Just wanted to make sure I don't actually get everything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long-lost younger sister. But as soon as she does, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was gonna be a nice story, so that dark turn came out of nowhere. Ha ha! Ha ha! Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Morp? No, it's not, not that! Morp, Morp definitely a fan of that sort of thing! I mean, I can definitely enjoy these kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. 
Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems so completely different. It's just that those kind of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals and their own philosophy that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. It's scary. I'm scared out of my wits. I peed my pants, but it's okay. Hey, I haven't lost interest or anything in you. Well... I guess it's all right then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's impossible. I really don't think you need to worry. No one's talking to me in a long time. So welcome. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. Ah, well, that's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it after all. You don't have to! <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Oh, let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put in my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah! Yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry, it's just the love in my heart. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything with my heavy breathing. I've got asthma, as you know. I like to wheeze when I'm really into a story. All right. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri meant by reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. It may be a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. Looks like she's reading from my book instead. So sorry I was just- Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? Hey, why don't you stop that? I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean- <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's, and then hold my book more between the two of them. Ah! I suppose so. Man, this is the most romantic book reading I've ever seen. The tension in the air is palpable. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we lean- <laughs> Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. Oh, scandalous! If ever I heard a scandalous thing! It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Shh, don't worry. I'll do it for you. <laughs> ah, there we are. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah, romantic. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. The way I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. <sighs> but in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. This is ridiculous. Hey, hey, Yuri, get, hey, back off. What about personal bubble, don't you understand? It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Hey, Morp, don't play that shit. Morp likes it cold when Morp reads. Are you ready? <laughs> Am I ready for what? To turn the page. Ah, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and her eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asking me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn of my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like a Intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the paper. God, is it getting hot in here or is it just me? All this thumb and paper action. I can't hardly stand it. The vapors letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri, this might be a silly thought, but you want to get married? 
The main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You, you think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways, but she also second guesses a lot of the things that she says and does. Just like you! Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I, I see. Okay, well, ow, my pride, but also, screw you, you're a sack of shit. Okay. Yuri remains silent for a moment. But Morp, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Oh, that's so embarrassing that you think that. Wait, wait, no, I realize how stupid that was of me to say. I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that horrible thing that you have. Oh, you're self-conscious about that? Oh shit, you should be, but wow, how, how could I admit that? I guess I more meant that it's kind of cute. Ah, turned it around. Instantly, 180. All insults turn into compliments. What are you saying all of a sudden? I... Okay, everyone! <laughs> I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Ha, ah, oh, he, ah. Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is it alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been able to look forward to this. Ah, it's not. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Oh, my thumb. All right. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer if I only read it with you? Um, I c guess you can read around if you want. It's not like we have a, 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 a closed reading. It's more of an open reading relationship. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. All right! I stand up. Okay! I make a mental note of where I left off in the book and then slip it back into my bag. Okay! By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah, sure did! It's a bunch of random words that came to my mind. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everybody's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! You, Sari and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sari's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. All right, who do I show to first? Hey, Monica! Hey, Monica, baby! Hey, I better save on this one. This is a genius poem. Can't let this genius go away. Hey, Monica! Hey, come here! I should start with Monica. Yesterday, she seemed eager to read my poem, and I want her to know I'm putting in... Oh, I'm putting in effort. Oh, yeah. I'm putting in effort, Monica. Hi, Morp! <laughs> Hi, Monica! Having a good time so far? Sure, okay. Ah, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening, and then I'll ignore you and punch you in the face for daring to change my beautiful club. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share the poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Morp. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? You know, I don't trust you, but that's okay. But it's the sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. Great job, Morp. I was going, oh, in my head while reading it. Not out loud, though. I would never do that. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. Hey, sure. Was it the vivacious? It was probably the vivacious. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. <laughs> that way it always counts when I put in some effort. Ha! That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked out anyway. You know, that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Sayori, who likes simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness, Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Oh, don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. 
Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own kinds of styles. But I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Ha ha! Ha ha ha! Okay, I don't like this. Anyway, you- Do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know. I see. Well, let's read it then. Ah. Hole in the wall. It could- What kind of hole are we talking about? It could have been me. See, the direction the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor. An angry boyfriend. I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas, already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. Beautiful. So what do you think? Oh! Oh, I've never been so excited about a hole in my life! Oh, it's a beautiful thing! Hmm, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Haha, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration between behind this one? Ah, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's coming, kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. And another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for the day. Thanks for listening. All right. Cool. All right. Who should I show my poem to next? I don't... I don't know, I don't, I don't really know. How about no one? Oh, uh, Natsuki! Sayori! Natsuki, I haven't talked to you yet. Hey! What up? Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. What? Excuse you! It's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said that was bad. It just didn't evoke any emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for your taste. Do you want to get smacked? It'll piss. <sighs> Well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I like it. I really like it. Actually, I like it. I told you that you weren't going to like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, uh, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. Uh, but isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yeah, exactly! I like it when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then it made, made it fall flat on its purpose. It helps to bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what I meant. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did ya? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor her with the last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't want to take that away from her. Aww. Alright, how about Sayori? Sayori! Hey, Sayori! Sayori! This is a good poem, Morp! Are you sure it's your first time? Of course! Not that good. Am I the kind of guy to be writing poems in his spare time? <laughs> I guess you're right. You're pretty terrible. But that's why it impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously. 
or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy you just say you wrote one. It reminds me of how you really are part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Eh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Morp. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? That's a backhanded compliment. Trying new things like this for other people, that's something that only really good people do. Thanks. I guess. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined, knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. And I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? Oh, yeah, all right. That will be my way of thanking you. All right, I'm gonna hold you to that. Yay! Okay, now you read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'll, I'm really bad at this. Yeah. <laughs> Right, hang on. Wait, I gotta save again. I don't know why, but I just gotta save. Okay, we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. <laughs> Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. I love <laughs> sure, okay, all right, cool. Sayori, this is just a guess, but did you wait until this morning to write this? No, just, just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel better about myself. Don't be mean! I still try my best. Aw, oh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school, it's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. I can't really see you as being cranky anyway. Anyway, thanks for showing me. You got it, Sayori. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monica's the best. Oh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever! Well, I guess I look forward to it. Huh. Interesting. Alright, well, it's just Yuri left. This hasn't taken a dark turn yet, but I got a funny feeling about it. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Yeah? What was that? What? Did you- did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. Oh, <laughs> her mouth just grows exponentially and she has to keep that shit contained. I, uh, he's gonna hate me. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Yeah, that's, I, I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? You've got great thumbs after all. <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicate you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Ha! <gasps> Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Uh, well, I know that. I just mean, uh. Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger along the words in the poem as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah, okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers, and have been through that myself. I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if it do her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little biased, though. Biased? How? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do! I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ah. Ghost under the light. 
The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. It must be this one, the last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time, the last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. All right, so you're a ghost. Is that what you're saying? You're a ghost. I get it. I see a ghost girl. Okay, I know. I get it. I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. I'm Morp very stupid. You need to understand this about Morp. Morp very a dummy. Well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Yeah? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Right? Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. <laughs> it wasn't too short? I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest, since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Aren't you a ghost? Your thumb felt very solid. Hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Morp. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. Eh? It's nothing, really. Yours was impressive too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. And your thumbs. You think so? Yeah, of course. You got real teaching thumbs. Ah. You know, I was really nervous about doing all this. But in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm gonna keep doing my best for you, Morp. Ah. Me too. Okay. Alright. Phew! I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As if they, as they read in tandem, I each watch their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, oh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? You completely missed the symbolism or something? It's clearly about feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I- I know that! I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try hard to come up with something to say nice to say? But thanks. It really didn't come out nice at all! Um, oh, eh, ooh. Well, I do have a couple suggestions. <laughs> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayor liked it. Morp liked it. Morp liked it a lot! So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring, which yours was not, which I haven't yet. And Morp liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh! I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. <laughs> uh, that's not what I- oh, you, You're just- Yuri you're stands up. Maybe you're just jealous that Mort appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? How do you know he didn't appreciate my advice? Are you that full of yourself? Oh, I- No! If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Ooh! <laughs> um, uh, uh, is everyone okay here? Well, you know what? 
I wasn't the only one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Morp started showing up. Oh, what? Natsuki. Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you! I don't like fighting guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me and turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing here. Morp! What? Uh, my boobs have made the same size! Duh! Yeah, I guess save a conflict here. She- she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out to the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, more. Wait! There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Morp? Uh, 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 how did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. Ah! Uh, oh boy. Okay, conflict. Hang on. Alright, I gotta think about this one. Uh, but I'm a thinking pants. Oh wait, I'm not wearing pants. Uh. Mmm. 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 All right, okay, all right, well. Okay, well, Yuri's full of herself. Yuri's full of herself. She's being a little uppity. She's being a little uppity. Natsuki was defensive off the bat, but Yuri was dismissive off the bat. That's the two juxtapositions here. Like, neither of them are right. I mean, they're right in their own ways, but obviously I can't take a side on it. Maybe Sayori can help me. Sayori! Help! Please! Help! Help! I really don't care what their opinions of me are! Natsuki! Natsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead I turn to Yuri. Yuri! Ugh! Ugh! But Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori! Ah! <laughs> yeah? Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Morp. Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri that what a stuck-up jerk she's being, she would never! It's your immaturity that made her upset in the first place. <laughs> Excuse me. Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why. Exactly why nobody likes. Stop! Natsuki. Yuri. You guys are my friends. I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people. And I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems. They're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? Because Morp's so hot. Well, also, Natsuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they always were. Big and beautiful. <laughs> Big and beautiful. Oh. Sayori. Sayori stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. I'll... I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So this is why Sayori is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader and can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing of me. <laughs> nah. It's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess that just means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't it? Isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see her get herself hurt. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to nod up. Oh, such a genuine person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. Oh, Monica. Okay, everyone! 
Such a bad time for us to leave! How did you all feel about sharing your poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright, well, mostly. Mark, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome! In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. Ah, I think to myself, I did learn a little more about what kind of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can do- at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Morp! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go! Why do I have a funny feeling that this is gonna take a horrifying turn? <laughs> Sayori beams at me. It truly really has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Oh, Sayori, about what happened earlier. Yeah, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, 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 no! That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. It's all your fault. It's your fault, Morp. It's your fault. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them! I might be in love with them! I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they make good friends with you. Phew. <laughs> you know, Morp, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. In the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too! That's... <laughs> Every day is gonna be so much fun. <sighs> it looks like Sayori still hasn't caught onto the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? <laughs> we'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. Whap, whap. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah, let's do this. Righty ho. Something's not right here. Something's not right. Ah! Poof! 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 Gotta go with poof! Poof! Ah, uh, analysis. Ah, uh, pleasure. Um, in not uh, lazy. Ah, uh, special. Ah, uh, vitality. Um, uh, Essence. Uh, bunny. Um, uh, uh, unrestrained. Um, pure. Uh, 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 tenacious. Incongruent. Uh, uh pop. Um, uh, uh, adventure. Uh, socks. I got special Markiplier socks. They're pretty cool. They got chica on it. That's pretty neato. Neato burrito. Ignore the chica hair on there. That's gross. Whistle! Uh, skipping. Uh, climax. Right. Uh, disown. Uh, 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 sunny. Uh, um, uh, boop, boop. Boop. Got it. Okay. All right. I don't know where this is going. Another day passes. It's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past few couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Morp! Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. Haha. <laughs> yeah. I'm just still not used to you being in the club, asshole. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to you get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simplest things with you anyway. <laughs> Your brain real simple, Sayori. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No, thanks. Oh. That's not like you at all! I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Huh? Why- why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Ah. Sayori nervous is, nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill on the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it! I can see right through you, Sayori! That's not fair! How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought the snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry, wanting to make an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves one option. Ugh. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. 
Yeah? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face in the book is always. Ah! I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. It was hilarious. Yuri! Tell Morp to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't let- don't get me involved in that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stun like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Whoa. Ah! Did I just- I didn't mean all that. I got too absorbed in my book. Ooh. <laughs> I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That, that word. Still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you! Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But... You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Pwap! What the hell? Kia! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and then tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was that? Huh? A cookie! <laughs> a cookie! It's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is it a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution! Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. Ha ha ha! I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> Natsuki! That's so nice of you! I'm so happy. Sari hugs the cookie. Geez, just eat it, okay? Sari rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Show good! <laughs> Sari suddenly clasps her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue! Heh <laughs> heh. You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, uh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez, beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> uh, Sari gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arm around her. Oh, jeez. Oh, gosh. I get it. I get it. Cookie's still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sari off of her. Um. Sari suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! My cookie! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful of Siri trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Uh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. Hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Oh, that's true. Excuse me! Oh. Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I'm gonna save real quick. This, 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 something done same. Something done same right about this. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Yeah? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all! You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind, Matt. What held you up anyway? Ah! Well, my last period was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it, since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware that you played music as well, Monica. Oh, I don't really. I just dabble in a few Beethovens and some, some Mozarts. Anyway, I just kind of started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds so cool! I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? And that could... Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I won't let you down, Morp. Ah. Monica smiles. Ah, I didn't mean any pressure on you or anything like that. Oh, <laughs> don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I choose to leave Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished off her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Oh. Ah! 
I hear Natsuki utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. Hmm. You looking for something in there? Freaking Monica! She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point of keeping her in her collector door? Someone else is just gonna mess it up! Natsuki slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across a shelf. Manga! You read manga, right? Ah, sometimes. Manga is one of those things where you can't admit you're really into it until you figure out where the other person stands. How did you know, anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? I see. There's a lone volume of manga amidst a stack of various books on the other side of the shelves. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There it is. Natsuki snatches it out of my hand. She then turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ah, much better. Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I know that feel. I've felt that feel many times. I get a closer look at the box set she was admiring. Parfait girls? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic or it's simply terrible. If you're gonna judge, you can do it through the glass on that door. She points to the classroom door. Hey, I wasn't judging anything. I didn't even say anything. It was the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, Morp. Consider this a lesson straight from the literature club. Don't judge a book by its cover. In fact, Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls on the box. I'm gonna show you exactly why. She shoves the book right into my hands. Ah! I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful attire striking animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly mo. Don't just stand there! What? Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. She then takes a seat against the wall beneath the window sills. She pats on the ground next to her, signaling me to sit there. Okay, wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. Eh? Why is that? I tried it out with Yuri with our thumbs almost touching. Ah, I guess it's easier to be close together like this. Ah! Don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it. You'll make me feel weird. Natsuki crosses her arm and scooches an inch away from me. Sorry. I didn't exactly expect to be sitting this close to her either. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. I opened the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I didn't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long has it been since I read the beginning? Hmm? You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? Not really. Maybe sometimes after I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Oh! I am, but nothing's really happened yet. So I can talk at the same time. Looks like it's a bunch of friends in high school. Typical slice of life affair. I kind of grew out of these since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make for up for the lack of plot. So, what should I expect from this? Is there gonna be plot? Oh, is there gonna be lots of plot? Well, obviously. You think I would enjoy something that didn't have a plot? I mean, well, I guess I know what you're saying. A lot of the beginning is about simple things, like there's a really funny chapter the way there is obsessed with a guy at the ice cream shop. But then, that just helps you get to know the characters. And besides, it's still entertaining. And later on, there's all kinds of drama. Like when they get into all their backstories, and when some of the romance starts to happen. That's really what makes it so good! There are so many touching parts. Ugh. And is that so? It sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. <laughs> ah, nah. Hey, wait! What's that supposed to mean? What? Uh, Natsuki gives me a little shove. Morp just meant that I Morp hasn't seen you at your full power. Huh, good save. Ah, uh, this chapter is, seems like it's about baking. It's just a guess, but is there a lot of baking in this manga? Well, Natsuki pauses for a moment as if she doesn't want to admit something. Yeah, well, it is called Parfait Girl, so one would surmise that baking was a predominant feature in the thing. Yeah, why does that matter? It doesn't. I was just curious. Since you enjoy baking too, right? That's just a coincidence! I just happened to get into baking around the same time I got this manga. Like I would ever get into anything because it's in a manga. I feel bad for anybody that impressionable. Ha ha ha! Definitely not a coincidence. I guess that explains Natsuki's interest in baking. Still, all the hobbies to pick up from a manga, that's definitely one of the better ones. Not to mention she's really good at it, so who am I to judge? Oh! How adorable. That's cutesy. That's a cutesy wootsy. We read on for a few more minutes. I've finished a couple chapters at this point. 
Mm. Are you sure this isn't boring for you? It's not! I swear! Even though you're just watching me read. Well, I'm fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something with someone you like. Oh, some something you like with someone else. Sorry. Slip of the tongue. A little Freudian floop. I think that's what they call it. I'm always excited to get excited when I convince any of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? <laughs> you don't? Oh, I don't have any friends. That's not... Well, I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Could you not rub it in? Oh, you really don't have friends. Oh, that's sad. Jeez. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> like I could ever get my friends to read this. They just think manga is for kids. I can't even bring it up with them without them being all like, Eh? You still haven't grown out of that yet? Makes me want to punch them in the face. Ugh, I know those kinds of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitated towards the other losers over time. Like you! You loser! Me am loser, you am loser, we am losers! Right? You get it. But it's probably harder for someone like you. Huh? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Someone who's an even bigger loser than I am, you know what I mean. Wait, which part? I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it up in my own room. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Except Monica was kind of a jerk about it. Oh, I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am, reading it. Your lifelong dream. Morp coming and reading your manga. Your dream come through, you're welcome. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Well, maybe, but more pretty sure it does. At least you're enjoying yourself, right? <sighs> yeah, so... <sighs> Jeez, that's enough. Are you gonna keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. I flip the page. Suddenly, Natsuki starts laughing. Ha ha ha. I totally forgot that happens. Natsuki puts her finger on one of the panels. Minori is my favorite character. You always feel a little bad for her since she's so unlucky. But it gets especially bad when... Oh. I shouldn't be talking about that yet. Just finish this chapter. Okay. Natsuki's voice sparkles with excitement. It's a stark contrast to her usual bossy tone. But if she's not used to sharing her favorite manga with her friends, I can understand why. It's hard to express in words the feeling you get when connecting with someone like that. And being able to provide that to Natsuki, for whom it's a rare experience. The thought makes me smile a little to myself. Okay, everyone, shut your traps! Ding dong, bing bong! Time to read your poems! Here, Monica doth decree that it's time to do the reading of the poems thusly that is now! Are you all ready? Get to your ready, your ready positions, I guess. Oh, come on. All right, hang on. Could your timing be any worse? Sorry, excuse my butt in your face. I just had to strike a pose. I just need to make sure we have enough time. Though you do look pretty cozy over there. <laughs> yeah? Ah! Natsuki suddenly notices how close she's gotten to me. She hastily slides herself a good 12 inches away from me. All right, guess I'll stop here for now. I close the book and hand it towards Natsuki. You're just giving it back? Don't you want to know what happens? Oh yeah, but uh, I'm a grown adult and I don't want to know. Monica just said, don't be dumb. Just take it home with you. Eh? Is that really all right? I say that mostly because I didn't really plan on using my spare time to read this. Well, of course. I would take forever to finish if you didn't take home. Just finish that one before tomorrow so we can start the next one. And if it gets bent, I will kill you. By tomorrow? Oh, I only got part way through the volume so far. I might fall behind on some shows if I try to get through this. But I suppose that's a necessary sacrifice of seeing Natsuki's enthusiastic face. Ugh, I do like that face. Or am I more scared of what'll happen if I don't finish it? All right, then. I stand up. I return to where I put my stuff and carefully slip the book into my bag. Who should I show my poem to? Well, gotta go with Monica. Monica! Hey, Monica! Hi again, Morp! How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that, as long as it's not gonna be bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Oh, I wouldn't count on that. I am pretty skilled, but Morp no poet. You never know. Want to share what you wrote today? Sure, here you go. Give my poem to Monica. All right! I like it, Morp! Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. Nah. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, 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 no. It kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. And she's a good writer, too. So take that as a compliment. Hmm. All right. Okay. If you say so. <laughs> yep! By any chance, have you read by anything by Shel Silverstein? 
Eh? Where the sidewalk ends? Maybe a long time ago. He was famous for telling all kinds of stories in just a few simple words. His poems can be funny, endearing, or even sad. And sometimes they're only a few lines long. They might even make you feel like they've written- they are be written for kids, but if you think about them, they can express views of the world that would apply to anybody. I see. So you're saying that Natsuki is kinda like that. Sorta. Maybe she's not an expert. But you probably won't find much filler in her poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. So I can see why it would be your kind of poem to explore. But anyway, you want to read my poem, right? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look! Sue. So, save me! The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, ex flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaning, noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Load, load me? Load me? Lo what? Load me, load me, load, load you, load what? Wait, load? What? Huh? It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Ha 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 ha! I guess it's just the way I write, huh? I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kinda like playing with my space on paper. Choosing where and how you space your words can totally change the mood of a poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about though. Uh -huh. Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it in that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game! You never know what you might change your mind, or when something unexpected may happen. But is this tip even about writing? Okay. What am I even talking about? Haha. <laughs> That's my advice for the day. Thanks for listening. Okay. Alright. Okay, alright, well I visited Yuri last, so Yuri first. You want my cutesy poem? Here it is, let's see what you've written for the day. Hmm, this is pretty good, Morp. Were you influenced by seeing everyone's writing styles yesterday? I guess you could say that. I was also a bit surprised by how differently everyone writes, so I respect you for trying new things. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings, and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I, I see. Okay, that's certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it. Of course I would! That's what I like! I like that! Is it the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. Ah, the raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scattering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as a, an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Alright, Yuri. It's more of a novel than a poem. It's a story. 
Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that! I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. Not really. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't imagine <laughs> what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself. You know, feeding raccoons and such. So, I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Be- Be akuas. They're embarrassing. And people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Morp? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad you're still a good listener. Oh, you're welcome. Who should I show my poem to? I don't even know what the hell just happened there. Alright. How about Sir Sherry? Sir and Sherry. Ah! I like this one more. It has some nice feeling in it, and I'm glad. Does it mean it's better than yesterday's? Yeah, let me think. I don't know. Whatever. I like them both. <laughs> that's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad, but that's just why I go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, more guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, Morp don't even know what kind of writing you'd like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try to give it some thought? Oh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Ah! Well, oh, that's weird. I don't really know what you mean by that, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Something a little bit of both. Happy and sad. There's a word for that, right? Melancholy, I think, is the word you're looking for. Bittersweet. That's also a word. Melancholy might not be the right word. Yeah! I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something that's sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can give a rain cloud the little hug. And make a nice happy rainbow. You are disgustingly happy. Well. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Huh? It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Morp. I should get to write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? All right. Here we go. All right. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. Boink. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle, a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, more fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave. Discovering the secret hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up. And in come my friends. In they come, in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frankly pull them from the shelf, one after another, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, in shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 inside my head. Wow, okay, wow. Holy crap, holy crap, yeah, holy crap indeed. Holy crap. Sari, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kinda creepy. Creepy? 
Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to be you being so cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about this. Huh, something goes wrong here. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Ah, oh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a habit of giving obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times, but seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Okay. Alright, Natsuki. Natsuki time. Here we go. Natsuki, hey! How's it going? She keeps glancing at me, bending back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. Are you supposed to be bad at this? Is that a compliment? No, I mean, you know. Natsuki struggles to find the word she wants. I just expected a lot less after what you showed me yesterday. That's all. Well, I guess I just got lucky with this one. Uh, yeah, exactly. You just got lucky, you know? Don't get used to it. You won't always manage to write poems this cute. I mean, I mean, well written. No, I mean, oh, oh God, I love you. Oh, oh God, you're so cute. Aw, that's, that's how it is. My poem's cute. No, why are you smiling? It's not like I like cute things. Natsuki shoves my poem back towards me. Huh, reading again, I decide it's not so great after all. It's too cute and dokey dokey. It would only impress, you know, girls who like that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, Natsuki is incredibly easy to see through. Well, anyway, you're gonna read mine now, right? Judging by your taste, you'll probably like it a lot. You'll probably learn something too. Don't forget who the real pro is. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wiggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words, but she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really badly. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The, be the world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Is this a poem about judging someone for one thing? No matter how good they are, if you let one thing ruin that about them, it's it's a bad way to judge someone. This is a really good poem! This is, this is a really good one! I like this! I really like that! Judging someone by one characteristic flaw that you don't like about them personally, no matter how good it is... Huh! Ah! Oh. That's a really good poem and speaks well. That's great. I like that one. Not bad. That's really good. Quite a bit longer. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. Hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward with this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler anal analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone who would agree with the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know what people are like that? Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about everyone, how everyone thinks my- That doesn't matter, it can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone else likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Huh, that's funny. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about these things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Ugh. It's not like I would judge her or anything. Natsuki has trouble finding words. I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff, I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. 
Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Oh, British! Okay, on. All right. All right, we're all done reading each other's poems. Get back to your corners. Don't make me bring out the billy club. I'm smack you upside your cute heads. Bash it right in. Don't make me. Threatening. I have something extra planned. <laughs> I have something extra planned today. So if everyone could come sit in the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Oh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. Well, just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry about it so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets that you can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually gonna be doing for the event. Ah, oh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're gonna be performing! Performing?! Uh, uh, Monica? Yeah, we're gonna be having a poetry performance. Each of us are gonna choose a poem to recite during the event, but the cool part is, we're also gonna let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it out on all the posters in case anybody wants to prepare up ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica?! You didn't- You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh? Yeah, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not bad. But I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm gonna be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poem with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room for of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone that literature is all about. Yeah! It's all about expressing your feelings. Being intimate with yourself. Finding new horizons. And having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't worry, don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do! I know we all do! And if it's all, that's all it takes standing in front of a room for two minutes about reciting a poem, then I know you can do it! Ah, okay. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayuri looks worried. I guess that leaves me with no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been really trying to get hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ugh. Okay, fine, alright, I guess I'll just have to get over it. Alright, phew! Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Ugh. Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. Sigh! I guess I don't really have a choice. Aw, oh, that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously gonna be the death of me. Oh, gosh. Wait. Foreshadowing, I... Foreshadowing. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're gonna be practicing reciting them in front of each other. No way! Monica! It's too sudden! Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to a specific poem she has in mind for herself. Gonna say before this, okay. Then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't ex understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica! Ah, thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next! I will! Oh, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. 
Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she so suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It gets deeper. The room darkens. The lights all go out. Everyone cares to a cold breeze to brush in through the window. All right. all right. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality. Oops, there goes gravity. Mom's spaghetti starts spilling out of her pockets and glances around her. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Alright, there we go. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we're caught off guard that she must have- we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri! That was really good! Don't you dare upstage me ever again, I will kill you. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sari hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called, My Meadow. Ah. Ah. Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> so Yuri, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem after all, so it'll come out best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sarah begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think too much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. Ha! <laughs> even Morp liked it. I guess that's a good sign if Morp like. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's... well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time, I'm gonna make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay! Now who's next? Natsuki? <laughs> Don't make me go before Morp. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Morp lower everyone's standard a little before I have to do it. Not Suki. Oh, come on now. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the pro podium. Everyone has their eyes on me. Make it feel awkward. Oh, hello. I thank you for all standing in order of tallest to shortest. And also, biggest boobs to smallest boob. I appreciate that. That's really welcome, I guess. Okay, anyway, I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. I'll applaud myself, don't worry. Morp, Morp has Morp's back. So, sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities, more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are y'all looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem's called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Ah, oh, well. Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about it for the festival. That said, I want to thank you everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez! I should probably find some other way poem to recite instead. 
That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're all putting in the effort for the club. It makes me really happy. And you know what that means, I guess. Ah, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. Okay, it's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue with that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day! I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. Alright! Great, I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and I'm impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Yep, Peruni, look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make it such a big deal out of it. Must be a little nice, though. So. Well, ah, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Morp, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. Alright, I walk home with Sayori once more. Gotta save one more time. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Eh? Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Uh, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day, Natsuki asks to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> oh. oh. Decision, decision, huh? Well, I mean, it's... It, if she has to walk home, is it out of my way? I mean, we're conveniently living near each other, so... But, you know... You know, eh, uh, you know, I just, yeah, I'd probably still, yeah, I'd probably still walk back with you, I guess. Yeah? Yeah, sure, okay. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Mitsuki? Eh? But, but, she's so cute and fun to be around. Jeez, I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Morp. Morp, you're so silly. You think about me too much sometimes. You're so silly. Natsuki would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sayori, I've already made up my mind once and forever. This decision here is final. <laughs> to take, to take precedent over everything. I mean, honestly, I don't like being... I don't like being narrowed down into the people I can walk home with, but you know it is. If Yuri... Now, if Yuri... That's a different story. Monica! If Monica... Ah, uh, drop you like a hat. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point of speculating something that's never gonna happen? Huh? The conversation trails off. Kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I wanted to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what'll happen in that time. Death. Death will happen. Probably. Probably. Oh god, I have to write another one. I have no idea how this one's gonna go. Oh boy. Alright, hang on. <laughs> Okay, anyway, that's really horrible. Everyone hates me now. Okay, so I'm gonna try to write... I'm, I've, I've written one for Yuri, accidentally, and I've written one for, uh, Nitsuki. I'm gonna try to write one for... For, uh, Sayori. Hope! Ah, there we go. Ah, la la. Oh, boo, boo. Boom, boom, boom. Mum, mum, mum. Shame! Ah, cool, cool, cool. Hello, do. God, there's a poof. Can't skip poof. Poof, poof, poof. Okay, there we go. Poof, poof, poof. Ebba, doop, poof, 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 poof. Jumpy. Oh, nope, that's not what I want. Okay, here we go. Where's the family? Uh, there we are. Got the family and doop, boop, booby doo. Dut, doop, boodle doop, 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 do
not doing good. Joy, yay, uh, there's some joy. It's alone. Fun. Calm. Fear. Hair. Oh, whoops, then do that. Tears. There we go. How about do a loop boop up party? Up, up, be a loop, but, but hurt. Up, up, be a loop, that dokie dokie dokie. Oh, shit. Do, bop, be a doop, boop, blah, little loop, bop, 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 Nature. Lubba dubba doop, boop, together. Lubba dubba doop, boop, destiny. Oh, shit. Do, bop, 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 Childhood. Hey, I think I got it. I think I got a predominantly good one. Oh man, what? What is it? I'm the last one here again? Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. Aha. You must have a lot of determination. No one's saying anything. Starting this club, I miss that. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't all for you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. Oh, I can't wait for the festival. Oh, it's gonna be great. Huh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part in the festival, but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat and all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on! Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? You? Miss Squid Lover? Huh? I know your AIM handle is Squid Lover 99. We all know that. Oh, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because! Write your name! Monica! Yeah? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. <laughs> ah, never mind. Let's fo just focus on your own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori in the, is at the desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. Well, I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah! Eh, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything all right? Of course! Why wouldn't it be? It feels like you're a bit off. Sorry for assuming things. Geez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Yeah, yeah, that shows me a big smile. Yeah. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone, okay? Well, all right. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back towards everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed and everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who's shuffling through papers throughout her desk. Marp! What's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but uh, have you noticed anything's up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? Can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you. Morp, you certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, 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 no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself with my robot emotions. That always works out for everybody. Why not? Eh, you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing that up with the person of interest. Oh, person of interest. What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, more Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? What? The handsome guy like me? With amazing social skills? And lifelong childhood friend? What? I probably shouldn't say too much, but Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know. Eh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Why? Turn it off. Turn the light off. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it always has been. <laughs> You're so funny, Morp. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you. <laughs> uh, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions. You should probably just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah, all right. Monica smiles meaningfully. 
I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. Oh, the burdens of having all these ladies after you. Oh, how accursed it is to be as handsome as me. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her, but to have fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much I do care I care for her, or do I, do I care that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now I'm feeling like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. HEY! Oh, sorry, excuse me, sorry, wow. I look up to see Natsuki next to me. Are you just gonna sit there and stare at nothing? There isn't that much time, so... Ah, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to make you worry or anything. It's not like I'm worried about you. I was just... Natsuki glances down at her side. She's holding a volume of manga in her hand. That's right. Something just came up for a minute, but we can get started now. I won't make you wait any longer. Jeez. Now you're making me feel like a jerk. If something's bothering you, then you can just tell me to leave you alone and I will. I mean, assuming that you didn't feel like talking about it or anything. She practically mumbles the last part. No, I'm probably making it seem like a bigger deal than it is. I've just been thinking about Sayori, that's all. So, Sayori! Thinking about her? Yeah, she seems pretty down today. But she didn't want to admit it to me, so I can't help but wonder if something's happened to her. Oh. <laughs> well, first of all, you should really work on your phrasing. But anyway, you're her best friend, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Then in that case, I think you should trust her a little more. If she needed you, then you would be the first person she would go to, right? Well, I guess that's true. I mean, some people just have those days. You can't always avoid it. If anything, she probably just doesn't want you to worry about her because it's not important. Yeah, that kind of is what she said to me. Maybe it's not right for me to go against her wishes. Exactly. So shut up and read this manga with me. Okay, all right. Oh, well, she needs you to worry about her. Then it'll be a lot more obvious. Yeah. I should have thought of it that way from the start. Natsuki fiddles with the book she's holding in her hand. She... She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Ah! Oh, what? No, nothing. No, like garbage. I'd throw her out on any day. Don't get the wrong idea or anything. We've just been friends for a long time. It's normal to be worried about your friend. I mean, you were worried about me, so... I was not and we're not friends, so screw you and go to hell. Geez, if you're fine, now let's hurry and get started already. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh. Wait, what's going on? Oh, okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out from the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything's back to normal. Now we gotta figure out who we're gonna show our poem to first. I don't remember who we showed it to first last time. But I guess it doesn't matter. Let's go to Monica, at least. Hey, Monica! Hi, Morp. How's it going? Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well... Being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people... I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Alright. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sort of things in common. Oh, well. We may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm? <laughs> Well, that may be the case, but maybe there's also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when I read your poem. Hmm. I didn't write that. You sure you're not reading into it too much, Monica? <laughs> I could be. I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Sayori's writing has that kind of gentle feel to it. I can tell you she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, it's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Er, uh, alright. I wonder how this is gonna go. The Lady Who Knows Everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders Earth. The Lady Who Knows Everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather. Where's my mouse? A feather. 
Lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. The twilight sky. Until one day the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall and fall, and fall even more, gentle as a feather. A dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I'm thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath... She blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. Okay. Alright. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sort of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. Okie dokie then. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because even if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. Seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans are too, aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Ah, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing uh, tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you what your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way and it'll make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for you today. Okay, and uh, considering that my response to your poem may have been a little lukewarm, are you gonna, gonna do something about that? Are you gonna hold that against me? Are you gonna be very angry at me? I don't know. Thanks for listening. Okay, alright. Who should I show my poem to next? Well, let's go straight to Sayori this time. Hey Sayori, how you doing? Hmm, it's nice I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Thank you. <laughs> Siri just picked up on something I said. Let's see. You don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. <laughs> I didn't write this for anyone specifically! Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. I feel like there should be something else that matters to you, Sayori. Also, considering I picked this poem to be for you. Sayori, is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Alright, just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist, I'll go play. Yeah, that's what we're doing. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori? Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. Well, that's... Well, that's a little weird. Huh. Peculiar, Natsuki? Hello. This one's alright. Alright? No one liked my poem! Well, yeah. It doesn't blow me away. But there's nothing really I hate about it. It's just not really my style. I mean, that's fine. Come to think of it, this reminds me of Sayori's poems from yesterday. Eh, you think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so... <laughs> Fluffy, spend so much time with someone like you. It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Ugh, that was a little unnecessary. But I think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she probably would just fly away like letting go above a balloon. You could say we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Yeah, sure. Okay, thanks for the insult. I'll be your beach. 
Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go, a shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. Oh, I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand. Bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail. Set you free in my windy sail. And remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. Oh. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought you'd left long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. That's beautiful! Yeah. I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kind of hard to write anything negative about the beach. So you decided to write about the beach first and then came up with the message later? Yeah, well, it's only because of what happened yesterday. I mean, after Yuri and I realized we kind of wrote about the same thing, she wanted to pick a topic and have us both write about it or whatever. Ugh, can you really can see her doing that. Huh. Making us write about a simple topic, then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. Natsuki, I don't have a goddamn idea what you're yammering on about. I mean, if you have something that you got a problem with, just come out and say it! Alright, fine then. Bye. Alright, Yuri. Hello. How are you? Well done, Morp. Ugh. I don't know. You've definitely improved your writing over the course of these few days. Thanks! Picked a lot of random words out of a hat. Sure worked out well for me. Has my advice been helpful to you? Nah. Yeah, definitely. I'm glad. Sharing our writing like this. It's a lot more fun and rewarding than I anticipated. I'll need to remember to thank Monica. I think we all felt a little awkward at first, but now it seems like everyone is enjoying sharing their writing and seeing what others think. I guess I can't really disagree. I was afraid this whole thing would be a chore. But it's a great way for me to spend some personal time with all the girls in the club. But it's been fun to get to knowing everyone in their writing. And I guess doing some writing myself. If you call throwing darts at words on a wall writing, but that's just my creative process, baby. Well, have you learned anything about yourself, Morp? Nope. Not a thing. I'm a blank slate. I'm totally empty inside. Well, you know, how I like to say that writing is a very personal way to get in touch with yourself. I don't remember you ever saying that. In the end, it doesn't matter if you're a good writer or a bad writer. And even my opinions are just my opinions, you know? As always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. Because I have a funny feeling your... Your desires are a little off-putting. I'm kind of afraid of disappointing you in some other way. Eh? Why me? Well, you're always sophisticated with your writing and have the most advice to share. Oh, is that so? I'm so embarrassed. Yuri thinks for a good minute. That must be terrible. Eh? For me to have become someone whose opinion is fearsome. How unlikable of me. Yuri! It's not as bad as you're making out sound in your head! I mean, it's really bad, but not that bad. I just mean that I respect your opinion. I see. I'm sorry that I always overthink and come to those sorts of conclusions. I'm just a little too used to it. Overthinking? Being disliked. Oh, Yuri. What? What am I saying? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up. God, it's so hard being a tall, beautiful anime girl. Oh, God, why? Why have I been cursed with these qualities? Let's move on. All right. Do you want to share your poem now? Okay. Here. Ah. Here we are. Beach. A marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth chaotically meets the surface. Under a clear blue sky, an expanse of bliss, but beneath gray, rolling clouds, an endless enigma. The easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sandcastle where the sand is wet. But where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in? Whoa, 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 whoa! Or will its sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet still, we build sandcastles. 
I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back, and I abandon my peace to erode at the shore. Drift forward, and I return to the earth forevermore. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about. <laughs> what? What's wrong with the beach? What's wrong with the beach? You got a problem with the beach, lady? Oh, I got a problem with you if you got a problem with the beach. Although the beach is close to the ocean. Therefore, I now suddenly have a problem with the beach and I want it to die. Huh. But I did my best to make a metaphorical approach to it. Yeah, Natsuki already told me about it. She- She did?! She didn't say anything weird, did she? She just wanted us to write about the same topic again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought processes. Hmm, yeah, probably. Anyway, it was her idea, not mine! Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. It's just, I went with her request. Like a friend would. Ugh, God. But, well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Even though it's kind of crazy. And you're kind of worried about how what everyone thinks about you too much. Thanks for sharing. All right. Hi, Monica. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't you start figuring out- Hold on a second! Is it just me or did you say something strange just now? Huh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Ooh! <laughs> Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is a- Hey, whoa, 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 hey, whoa, hey, wait a minute, wait, wait, what's happening? In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing's different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. Sigh. Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is off, thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please, show some decency. Oh, come on, everybody pees! Ah, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? Hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all... Uh, no! First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship, and only friendship, just friends with Sayori. And second, we're just friends. She's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. <gasps> That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need- <laughs> Anyway, forget what you said, Morp. D you, you don't matter. I'm manipulating things behind the scene, apparently. Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparation, so... Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. What are you, what are you doing? That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. Oh, okay. But we need a lot of them in different flavors. Can you handle all those by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And so for myself, I'm gonna be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for your, as for Yuri, uh, Yuri, you can, uh, uh, um, eh? Uh, guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I am useless. Ah. I'm you. Oh shit! <laughs> I didn't mean for that to come true. Okay. No, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Well, <laughs> bitch. Now, now, Natsuki's pouting too. Jeez, I, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder when she, on you when she's not around. Ah, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know. So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? I'm about that. I... I love atmosphere! Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at the desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Morp. Ah, 
The one who is truly useless. I accept my useless nature. I will go on my way and do absolutely nothing because anything that I would do would be a detriment to your wonderful club. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. It would really appreciate it for that. Ah, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? <laughs> oh, yeah. How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Oh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> don't mind if I do. Uh, well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Mort may not like to be around if only you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations by my side, where our thumbs can be so close. <laughs> Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? You stupid idiot! Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Mort to- What are you saying?! It will be extremely meticulous work! And baking isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, 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 shut the F up! Please! Oh, God! Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Morp to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides... He hasn't really gotten a chance to spend any time with me! <laughs> ah, I like the way you lean! I like the way you lean, Monica! I like the way you lean! Alright, anyway. So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said... I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Morp, you're okay with this, right? Oh, ladies. Ladies, there's there's Morp enough for everybody. Just everyone calm down here a little bit. Morp know how to treat three ladies. <laughs> In the end, it's up to you. Ah, of course. <laughs> Very well. In that case. Everyone looks straight at me. See, but of course I'm gonna go with oh, Sayori. Ooh, the <laughs> ooh, ooty woody woody woo, woo 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 woo. Ah, la 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 la. Okay, so here's my logic, right? Natsuki, Yuri, and Monica are all taking care of something here or other. Sayori, something's obviously bothering Sayori. But also, this is the first time I've been able to spend any sort of free time with Monica. And there's something about Monica, the way her green eyes are creeping over that, <laughs> that name bar, that just, you know, sets my heart a-fluttering. You know how it be? You guys know how it is, right? You guys understand what I'm talking about, right? Right? You don't? Okay, alright then. Well, if you do understand what I'm talking about, you know. Alright? Anyway, I saved. I'm gonna go with Monica. I know Sayori's probably needs me by her side right now, but... Ah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Monica. Well, I guess I should probably be helping Monica. Yay! You picked me! <laughs> Hold on one second! Y yeah! Monica, you're the one who needs the least help out of all of us. Eh, but... I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but you already have Sayori as well. But Norp was the one who- Ah. Uh, that doesn't matter. Morp doesn't matter. You were the one who scared him into picking you in the first place. You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. Monica, you shouldn't let any ulterior motives interfere with his decision. Ulterior motives? What are you saying, Yuri? In fact, it sounded like you guys are the one who with ulterior- uh, un, 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 uh, You motives. <laughs> Excuse me. Otherwise, this wouldn't have been made into such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false, Monica. Yeah, we have a lot of work to do, you know. We won't do as good a job if you make us work alone. Ha, huh, maybe that's true. Think of the club, Monica. If we want our event to succeed, then we need to appropriately distribute our resources. Um, ah, so are you going to do the right thing, President? Okay, okay, I get it. Huh. <sighs> It's technically most logical for Morb to help one of you two. So, I guess that's what we'll do. Well, that's bullshit then! What the- What a load of garbage! What- What a load of big flip flapping garbage! I'm gonna go with Sayori then, you stupid idiots! I mean... 
If it's gonna be anyone, then I'd prefer helping Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors and- But Monica said- Monica said that Sayori was helping her! Jeez, do you really hate us that much? Yep. Yep, yes I do, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Yeah, Monica. Oh, sure you didn't. Oh yeah, okay. Just think of the club, okay? What? What the- That, that, that is bullshit! It's bullshit! It's bullshit and you're bullshit! All this is bullshit! Bullshit, 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 bullshit! Bullshit! It's bullshit! Wait, I, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna see- Are both of these moot choices? And I wanna see if- I just wanna see if they're moot choices. Like, if I pick Sayori here... I mean, if it's gonna be a Sayori, we're already neighbors. But Monica said... Wait. What? Oh, it's the same thing. God damn it. Well, alright then. Oh, God. Why do I have to pick one of you assholes that I don't care about? Uh, Natsuki! Uh, Yuri! Natsuki Yuri! Alright, you know what? You screw you guys. I'm gonna flip a coin. Cause I don't, I don't have one preference either way. Which way for one of you two? I don't care. Where's a goddamn coin? Give me a coin! Give me a coin! I don't have a coin. I got... Alright, I got this... I got this special... Hey, what, what, mer merch plug. I've got this special Christmas edition dog toy for Chica. It's got Chica's face on it. If it lands face up... I'm gonna go with Natsuki. If it lands face down, I'm going with Ma Yuri. Here we go. Hey, it's Natsuki. <laughs> All right, there we are. It's just random chance because I just don't care. I can't be bothered. This is bullshit. The bullshit. Natsuki. Well, baking sounds like it could be fun, and you guys made it sound like a lot of work, so it probably could use two people. Don't worry. Baking is a ton of fun. You'll definitely agree. <laughs> Just a minute ago, you were saying that- No, that's because I didn't have a chance to go on a date with more. Ugh, oh, never mind, okay? Well, anyway, you'll be fine by yourself, right, Yuri? Of course. All alone, with my poems and books. I'm used to it, after all. <laughs> Being abandoned- <laughs> What a stick in the mud. That's good. Even though Yuri is being melodramatic, it's a little hard to not feel bad. So that's everything, right? Anything else we need to talk about? No, I think that's it. Are you guys excited? Nope. No, I'm not. I am not. I am not. This is not what I wanted. Everything except the performance is gonna be awesome. <laughs> Alright, cool. I don't think really- I don't really think that counts. What about you, Morp? Me? Oh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me! What about you, Yuri? Yuri? She's still sulking. She's dead inside. Just like everybody else is gonna be dead on the outside! Alright, Natsuki starts pouting, too. It's not... I mean, it's not that big a deal or anything. Well, it might not be just that. I think that Yuri might just be feeling a little unappreciated in general. Having to come up with something for her to do and then nobody offering to help. That doesn't mean... Oh... <sighs> Natsuki glances back and forth between everyone with a worried expression. Look! Natsuki goes over and puts her hand down on Yuri's shoulders. Yuri, you really are the most talented one here. And... And you're gonna help make the event a lot more fun and welcoming. I mean, the cupcakes will probably help a lot too. But you're gonna make the atmosphere special. That'll be really important for the way that people feel during the performances. So, you need to stop being dumb. <laughs> you need to stop being a stupid idiot, a big, dumb, goofy, ugly idiot, and give yourself a little more credit. Natsuki releases her hands and turns around to face the other direction. You didn't really mean that, did you? All the screaming about how dumb I was. You didn't mean that, did you? Because that hurt my feelings. Um. Not really, but... Yuri isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Natsuki's words. Natsuki, of all people, to be saying such encouraging things. But I begin to understand. And fall in love. Natsuki was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. I'm sorry for being a big, dumb, stinky, stupid idiot. I'm gonna do my bestest. And all of us are gonna make it a really great event. Yeah! 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 I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's our time for a, to, to head out. Okay, but I'm staying here a bit longer. I barely got to do any reading today, so... Fair enough! There's nothing wrong with that. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Yuri out the door as they chat between each other. 
um, where are you going? We still need to figure out our plans for this weekend. You literally would have gotten home and realized that you didn't even have a way to contact me. Oh, that's true. Right. Okay. I have no idea how that slipped my mind. Maybe because I, I just didn't care. Jeez, good thing I stopped you, you big dumb idiot. I'm giving you my number, okay? But don't read into it or nothing. <laughs> God, it's amazing how I'm able to predict the following dialogue. Why would I do that? <laughs> Natsuki gives me her number. Okay. I'm coming over on Sunday. I'll bring all the ingredients. Wait. You're coming to my house? Yeah! What's wrong with that? I mean, I just figured that since I'm the one helping, I would be going to your house. Y yeah, right! Creepy weirdo! <laughs> like I could have a guy over at my house. My dad would kill me! Really? That's kind of strict if you ask me. Yeah, how do you think I feel? I can't do anything when I'm dying alone. Anyway, I just need to complain for a second. We have each other's numbers now. That's all I needed from you, and nothing else. So you go F off! I'll see you on Sunday. Guess I'll text you when I'm coming over. Alright, fine by me. Yeah. I'm really gonna show you why I love- Oh! Well, I'm gonna show you why I love bacon so much. Oh, I'm gonna show you! Oh, you're gonna see. Oh, you're gonna see so good. So you better look forward to it. Oh, yeah. Oh! Didn't you say you were just gonna give me the dirty work? Oh, I'm gonna give you the dirty work, all right. Well! I was just saying that. It's not like I could act like... in front of everyone. That's that I was looking forward to this. Wait, really? Well, kind of. Just because I never got to bake with someone else before. That's all it is, so... Right get it! Sorry for overreacting. Anyway, I'll be heading out now. See you on Sunday! Ah! Never mind. Alright, see ya! Okay. I can't believe this! Natsuki is gonna be coming to my house on Sunday? Even though I would have preferred to do this with Sayori. My anxiety still shoots through the roof! I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. But who knows what end might end up happening when we're outside of school! She even told me she was looking forward to it. Maybe we're going to <gasps> kiss and whatever. I shake my head. Oh, God, I shouldn't think such naughty thoughts. Why do I feel nervous that Sayori finds out about this? It's not like we feel that way about each other. Besides, like Monica said, this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. If I just go with it. Okay, it's already Sunday. Wow, that was fast. Okay, wait, hang on. Gotta save. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Natsuki's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much! I wonder if she'll act any different when it's just the two of us. Oh, jeez. Meanwhile, she's been texting me a lot. We sent each other one after exchanging numbers to double check, but it turned into a conversation. She's almost a different personality on the phone, using tons of emoji and cute language. She also really likes complaining about things, but I saw that one coming. Putting new Natsuki aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left club early that other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? Probably not! I decide to visit Sayori before Natsuki comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play- I got a bad feeling about this. Played so often that we made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we're family. Got a bad feeling about this. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom when I finally meet, find her. Sayori? Oh! Hi, Marp! I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Ah, I guess you're right. It's been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it up for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Are you supposed to see Natsuki today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Sayori had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, uh, that's true. Maybe. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course! But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Mitsuki then. Right. Yep, Rooney! There's more silence between us. 
Sayori stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I'm finally getting the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. Sio! Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Morp. Uh. Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have ever even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. Hehe. <laughs> okay. Sayori, that's not funny at all. At all. Hmm. I grab Sayori by the shoulders. I shake her really hard. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah! <laughs> stop shaking me. Sarah gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Morp. But... You're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> uh, you're really just gonna make me say it, aren't you, Morp? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Oh, man. Without anyone worrying about me. Jeez. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Siori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so bad for me to just not think about her? Why, Siori? Yeah. Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do, I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand it all, Morp. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it is, whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No more. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. No? Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. Oh, that's crazy thinking. That's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Oh, that's ridiculous. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. Shuk, 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 shuk. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Ah! Morp. Sayori. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please, never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. More. 
Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No. Don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Morp. I. Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Morp. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm. And that's really scary, too. Sayori lets me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um. Ah. It's what I want. I promise. I... I think that would be nice, then. Yeah. Sayori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Natsuki to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Ah, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. I look forward to it. God, that does... I would, like... If it, if this was me, I would have canceled plans right then and spent it all with Sayori, like... It, it doesn't even matter if, like, I'm in love or nothing. It's just like... God, that's what a friend would do. That's what a friend should do. Just forget plans. Natsuki would understand. Sayori's the one that needs. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But if it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Natsuki is about to come over, too. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely gonna have a great time tomorrow. Ugh. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. I don't know. I don't know, I just feel bad about it. I spend only a few minutes back home anxiously awaiting Natsuki's arrival. Before I know it, she texts me to let me know she's outside the front door. Without delay, I open the front door and let her in! Hey! Sup? Hey. I don't know what I was expecting, but seeing Natsuki in something other than her school uniforms totally threw me off. Seeing her in such cute clothes make the uniform seem totally unfitting in comparison. Jeez, don't make it feel so awkward already. Stop staring at my clothes! It's gonna be a long afternoon, so don't just be weird just because you're not used to seeing me outside of school. Anyway, I'm coming in! I see you brought a lot of stuff! Natsuki is carrying a large bag that is probably full of baking supplies. Well, I didn't want to come all this way to find out that your kitchen isn't equipped for the job, so I'm moving in! You brought everything I asked? Yeah, I did. Yesterday, Natsuki asked me to buy a bunch of ingredients if I didn't already have them at home. Good! Glad I could count on you to do your part. Well, I am Mr. Reliable. I'm surprised to hear Natsuki suddenly say that rather than something snarky like she usually does. Could it be that she's a little different outside school after all? Anyway, let's go to the kitchen. Why, you're not even gonna offer to take this heavy bag from me? Where's your hospitality, more? Come on. Since when did I need to be a gentleman? I grab the bag Natsuki holds out to me. <laughs> this is ridiculously heavy. <laughs> I carried that all the way here. Are you impressed? I see now. I didn't know that you were so strong. Yeah, I am impressed, Natsuki. Seems like I always underestimate you and your strong body. <laughs> it's because I'm so small, isn't it? You jerk. Natsuki hits a fist into my chest. I go flying into the wall and break three of my ribs. Hey, hey, your size has nothing to do with it. Size has nothing to do with it, Natsuki. Do you really hate being small that much? Eh? Um... It's not like I hate it. I mean, sometimes I like proving people wrong when they only think I'm worth my size. It's fun when I get to be small and also better than most people. Hey, feel the same way, Nasuki. Morp read you loud and clear on that one. But, jeez, never mind. What are you making me say? 
Don't think you can make me talk about weird things just because we're not at school. Are we getting started or what? There's a lot of stuff I gotta teach you. Haha. <laughs> what? That's a little bit more like you. You're more fun when you just speak your mind like that. Hey! Now you're treating me like a kid! Hey! I was just trying to be a little nicer, you know? It's just because I don't have a mature and sexy figure like Yuri doesn't mean you should treat me like... Ah! <laughs> Natsuki catches her words and her face turns red. Natsuki, how dare you mention Yuri's tall and sexy body. Forget it. I didn't say anything. I should apologize. Yeah. I appreciate that you were trying to be nicer. I should have been a little bit more considerate. But also, if that's what you're thinking, then you should know that there are a tons of guys who are into body types like yours. Now this conversation has suddenly taken a weird turn. Ah. How would... You know that anyway. Just trust, trust me, trust more upon this one. Ugh. Anyway, gross. Hey, what's that to me? Who else? Man, let's just get started already. Oh, the sexual tension is getting too thick in here. <laughs> you get all sour when girls call you gross. I finally found your weakness, Morp. Natsuki smiles deviously. Please spare me. Well, if Natsuki decided to dish out more insults like that, there's no way I'm not fighting back. But she's satisfied enough for now, finally starting to pull things out of her bag so we can get started. Okay. Before long, the whole kitchen is a mess. Spoons, dirty bowls, flour spilled fluid, and plastic bags are strewn about every countertop. The mixer isn't big enough to make all the batter at once, so we had to do it several times. Meanwhile, Natsuki is babysitting all my movements to make sure I don't mess up her precious baking. Morp, where did you put the food coloring? The batter's going in the oven soon, so I need to fill the trays. I think it's still in the bag next to the table. What are you using for? The color of the batter, of course. I'm making each tray a little different color. That way, even if the flavors aren't different, everyone can still pick their favorite. Ah, it's a cute idea. You're cute. It's a cute idea, cutie. Are we doing anything like that with the eye thing? Do you want to? Ah, uh, you're asking me? I don't really have any preference, so... Come on! You're not putting any heart into this! Can't you at least try to have fun? I'm having fun. Baking. I'm not really sure what Natsuki is trying to get out of me. Meanwhile, I see her separate the batter into smaller bowls and put a few drops of food coloring in each. Ah, it does look pretty cool. See? It's not like baking is just about following instructions. The presentation is where you get to be creative and have the most fun. It's a million times more worth it than the end of just looking at everyone lighting up. Like the ones you made in the first day, huh? I recall Natsuki proudly presenting her cat-shaped cupcakes and Sayori and Monica's delighted expressions. I wonder if I can make Natsuki proud like that, too. Yeah. Maybe I will use food coloring then. Sounds like you're starting to understand. You're starting to get it, huh? Just make sure you completely finish mixing the icing before you mess with the food coloring. Yeah, it's getting there. We were just using an electric mixer for the batter, so I got stuck with a whisk and a huge bowl. Ah, uh, don't worry! Morp got mixing on lock! Got my speeds one and a million! It's all good. Eh? The icing's still all lumpy! Are you even trying? Well, yeah. It'll just take a little longer. Jeez, I'll be here all night if you do it like that. Here, look. Grabs a whisk and uses her other hand to tilt the bowl back. You need to really need to beat the ever-loving shit out of this! After a few seconds, the consistency of the icing has already improved. See? You dumb idiot! As if to emphasize, Natsuki sticks a finger in the icing and pops it in her mouth. I reluctantly start to do the same. Um, uh, uh, uh. Hey! Natsuki suddenly grabs my wrist. I don't want your gross fingers in my icing. Your icing, eh? Are you forgetting who did all the work? I start to fight back, trying to inch my finger towards the bowl. Don't make me beat the crap out of you next. I'd like to see you try. <laughs> ah, slosh, I just spray her with a whole bowl of icing. I push harder, just enough for my featured finger to reach the icing. I triumphantly scoop some with my finger, just as Natsuki tugs with all her might. Ah! The force of Natsuki's pulling causes me to stumble, making her stumble in turn. We fall on each other. Probably. Gross. You got it on my f- <laughs> You got it on my face. Whose fault is that? There's a big glob of icing on Natsuki's cheek. <laughs> she tries to reach it with her tongue, but it's <laughs> too far away. Jeez. You know what? Take this! Natsuki instead wipes it off with her finger before shoving her finger towards my own face. You wish I'm faster. I grab her wrist with my hand before it reaches my face. I don't like this conversation. I just don't like it. Natsuki tries to use her other hand to fight back, but I grab with that one as well. 
Rassle, rassle. Ha ha ha. Stop. <laughs> Not until you apologize for calling me gross. Ha ha ha. Fine, fine. <laughs> I'm sorry for calling you gross. Shook, 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 shook. You know, I don't mean it. It's just fun seeing you react to it. You do that to me all the time, you know? Saying dumb things just to get a reaction out of me. You really shouldn't tease girls like that. Is that so? In that case, I probably shouldn't do this either. I take Natsuki's finger and put it in my mouth, licking off the icing. What? 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 Did you seriously just? Ah! Natsuki is so surprised that she can't even figure out how to get mad at me. Her face is entirely red. Morph! You really shouldn't do that kind of things to girls unless you, unless you really like them. You know that, right? Oh! Uh, what kind of questions she asked me just like that? I don't know. Did the moon, how did the moon turn to this so quickly? So quickly! I've been uncomfortable for the past five minutes! Everybody in the comments is hiding behind their pillows! God! I... Oh, Natsuki gazes at me in silence. I notice her shallow... <laughs> I didn't think that word was breath there for a second. Why am I starting to feel dizzy? Eh? Eh? Out of nowhere, the fire alarm starts going off. Natsuki rushes over to the oven. Is something burning? I thought you didn't put the cupcakes in yet. <coughs> no wonder. You left a dirty tray in here, dummy. How could you make a mistake like that? You're finished! She pulls out guns and shoots me right then and there. You should have checked before turning the oven on, idiot! Don't blame me for your mistakes, dummy! Jeez! Natsuki uses an oven mitt to grab the blackened tray out of the oven. She sets it on top of the stove. In another moment, the fire alarm stops. Anyway, I'm putting them in the oven now. Yeah. <laughs> the tension from the moment before still lingers over our heads. But the moment has already been lost. I watch as Natsuki slides the cupcake trays into the oven. Then, I reluctantly pick up the whisk and continue with the icing, like nothing ever happened. Cause nothing did. Ah, that smells so good! The cupcakes are already being- are ready to be pulled out of the oven. As soon as Natsuki opens the oven door, a blast of sweet-smelling warm air fills the room. Look at how cute they all look. She proudly shows off the different colored cupcakes in each of the trays. They'll look even better once we add the icing! Not like you need me to tell you that. To tell me that. <laughs> I brought decorating stuff, so I hope we can get creative. No! Don't do that. I've heard warnings about getting creative. Here, scoop the icing into these bags. Natsuki hands me some plastic bags. I have these nozzles that will make it look nice and fluffy. This one can even make flowers. We probably won't be using it this time, though, so I don't even know why I mentioned it. What's this one for? I pick up one of the nozzles that has a much thinner tip than the others. That one's really thin. You know why that one is. But you can also use it to write stuff on a cake. Like, happy barb day, for, or whatever. Ah, oh, I see. Okay, that gives me an idea, actually. Well, it's a literature event, right? We can make it a little more literature-themed by writing a different word on each of the cupcakes. It would be fun to see people choose their cupcake based on a word they like. <clears throat> hmm? I was kind of expecting you to say something really stupid. And then you did! But that's actually a really cute idea, so... <laughs> Maybe I'm getting it from you. What's that supposed to mean? I'm not cute. Ooh. Come on. We're not at school, nobody's judging. You can't dress and act like this and not expect me to think you're cute. Well... Natsuki's voice trails off. Same with you, cutie. Hey! Eh? Did you say something? N no nothing Let's just... Do the icing! Natsuki picks up the pace and fastens a nozzle onto each of the bags. There's a lot to do, so we shouldn't be wasting time. Here, I'll show you how to do it. And then ghost style just right behind me, just like like the uh, like the the wheel of clay. Without giving me a chance to think about it, Natsuki quickly moves on. She shows me how to apply the icing and then we each get to work. I wrote butthole on one, just in case someone's favorite word is butthole. You never know. Aardvark for People who enjoy the beginning of a dictionary, you know. Oh, Markiplier, for people that don't want a cupcake. When we're finally finished, Natsuki puts them all side by side to admire our work. Look at how pretty they are together. Look at how pretty we are together. Yeah, they are. They are. They. <clears throat> I wish I could have one now. Well, there's no reason you can't, right? I don't see any harm in that. 
Well, yeah, but my dad's making dinner tonight, so I really need to save my appetite. Aha! <laughs> Sari's the exact opposite in that regard. If she was here, she'd probably be down ten cupcakes already. And she would still eat dinner. Come on, that's just unhealthy. Besides, when my dad cooks, I need to eat as much of it as I can. Well, anyway. I was hoping we would have time for manga. But I need to be home for dinner. Already? That's a shame. It's your fault for working so slowly. You should have thought about that. It's not like you'll always have this chance. What? What are you talking about? Man. As usual, Natsuki places the blame on me. You can bring the cupcakes tomorrow, right? If you and Sayori each carry some, then you probably could do it in one trip. Yeah, I can do that. And don't worry, I won't let her eat any. Wink. Ah ha ha. I wish she would listen to me the way she listens to you. Ah, yeah. I think again, back to the conversation I had with Sayori earlier today. I felt so helpless. Sayori always does listen to me, but at that point it feels like she couldn't listen to me at all. Okay, I'm all packed up. Good work today. You too. I'll walk you out, I guess. Suddenly, do 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 just like that, Natsuki is about ready to leave. It feels like the afternoon went by in a flash. More than that, did I even take the opportunity to get closer to her like I wanted? Did I want that? Did I want that? Well, I guess I'll be off then. Thanks for all the help and everything. See you tomorrow. Wait, Natsuki! Eh? What you said before about not always having this chance. It doesn't have to be that way at all. I had fun today. You showed me how fun baking could be. Like you wanted. But aside from that, you can come over any time. Okay? I think that if, if possible, I'd like to spend more time like this. If you want to read manga or go out somewhere... I am a Do you really mean that? Natsuki looks at me tensely, like she's trying to hide her expression. Yeah, I want to spend more time with you, baby. More? <laughs> I constantly forget how ridiculous Morp is. I thought you only cared about getting this done. Whoa. <laughs> Ooh. I'm sorry I had to leave so early today. I really didn't want to. I would really stay here longer if I could. I feel the same way as as you, so... Oof. Whoa! Hey! Whoa! Hey! Whoa! Hang on. Hang on a second here. Hey, whoa. whoa! Hey! Whoa! Hey! Whoa! 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 Wait, Natsuki? Standing inches from me, Natsuki looks up at me. I feel her fingers gently clutch at the sides of my shirt as if holding on to me. Her rose-colored cheeks and matching eyes fill my vision. Why does she have rose eyes, by the way? That's weird. Along with her slightly parted lips. What is happening? My head starts to go dizzy as I feel her soft breaths against me. I felt it for a while now. <laughs> Natsuki suddenly jumps back. Sayori! Eh? Ah. Hi, Morp. Sayori! Just now we weren't. <laughs> it's okay, Morp! I just stopped by to say hi! Ah. Well, you should have come a little earlier. I'm already on my way out, so. Oh, really? That's too bad. Yeah, well, I'll still see you at the festival tomorrow, so it's fine. Just don't eat any cupcakes before then. Anyone later? Clearly flustered, Natsuki hurries off and Sayori waves goodbye. Sayori! Thought you didn't want to come over today. Ah, well, you know, I have terrible timing, so, you know, I decided to come over. I tried to stay in my room, but my imagination was really being mean to me. So I had to come over and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Natsuki and how close you got to her. Makes me really happy. That you've made such good friends! That's all that matters to me. Oh, jeez. Tears start falling down Sarah's feet. That's all that matters to me! Why am I feeling this way, Morp? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Oh, come on. Sarah, don't say that. It's true, Morp! If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... What? Monica? Monica was right about what? Huh? Sayori! What I said before is true. I'm not gonna let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm gonna be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. What? That's quite a gr- That's quite a statement to make! But, but. 
Sari looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Morp. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori. It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Morp. I like you so much that I want to die. Oh. That's how I feel. And... That's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me in that rather egotistical statement that I just said? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know that you need the most right now. I know what you need the most. And that's what I'm going to give you. What am I going to give you? Uh, <laughs> You'll always be my dearest friend, Sayori. Well, I like you better than Natsuki. I like you better than Yuri. I love ya! I love ya! Love ya. Oh, I love you. I love you, Sayori. <laughs> what, what would happen? Probably something terrible. Alright, I'm gonna go with I love you. That seems like right. Because I don't- I, I really don't like Natsuki all that much. I love you! I love you. Eh? Those are my true feelings. So, there's no way you can make me like- like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner. But spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day, it helped me realize that you are truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens. As long as we can continue this every day, with you by my side. Then I know we'll both be happy. Morp. Suddenly, Siri wraps her arms tightly around me. Morp. Is this really okay? Yeah. I hold Sayori in my arms and pull her closer. You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you, Morp. I want to be with you forever. Me too. But we're both in high school, so... You know. College, whatever. Anyway, I feel Sayori's grip around me weaken a little bit. What is this? Sayori? I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. But why? Even now? Why won't the rain clouds go away? They're not going away at all, Morp. It's okay, Sayori. Might take some time for things to get better again. But no matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. Okay. I trust you. Sayori and I slowly release each other. So, I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? Hehe. <laughs> what are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know? I want everything to be the same as it always has been. Even if we really are... A couple. I don't know if I could handle anything more right now. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. Hey, Morp! Sarah gazes at me once again, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me, right? Eh? I don't really understand what Sayori means by that. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad, Sayori? I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. It feels like a bunch of thorns when you told me you love me. But that's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah. I do. That's my promise. I say that, but in reality, I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her and she loves me, but I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. Is that what Sayori meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know. But I know that I'll give it everything I got. Sayori is the most important person to me. And I'll do whatever it takes to... Have a happy future with her. Oh! It's the day of the festival. Sayori isn't here. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Yeah. Definitely. Why would that be? I need help getting the cupcakes down there. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. I managed to carry all the cupcakes by myself by carefully stacking two trays. Natsuki is already texting up a storm, but I can't respond thanks to my hands being full. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Natsuki at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great, too. Morp! Yes, you're the first one here! Thanks for being early. That's funny, I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing a little booklet- It is really quiet. It is really, really quiet. It is really quiet. 
Really quiet. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the one she prepared to, that has all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing! I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think that on a day as important as this, he'd try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful, knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. Yeah, I should have gone to her house, huh? I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But, maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. Yeah, you think, dummy? Haha. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, Morp. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. That doesn't explain anything, Monica. I stammer, embarrassed. Did Siri really tell her about it that quickly? That we're a couple now? I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Ugh. Monica is being as friendly as usual, but for some reason there's a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. It's really quiet, okay? Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets and lay down on the desk. Yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Uh, yeah, I thought so too. Flip through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki and Yuri's poem from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the ones she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Oh. Get out of my head! Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Ah. What is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Ooh, hi. Morp? What's wrong? Ah, oh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else they always written. But more than that, I- I changed my mind! I'm gonna go get Siri! I'm gonna go- I'm gonna go get Siri! Well- well, all right. Try not to take too long, okay? Okay. I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls that out after me. That's weird. Quicken my pace. Oh, what the hell? It's so quiet. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help wake her up. Even the simple gesture of walking into her school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs and what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. Can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. That really is something that a boyfriend would do, isn't it? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy! There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter a room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. <sighs> Oh. 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 Ah. What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this could be real! Sayori wouldn't do this! Oh man, I got chills down my spine at that! Everything was normal up until a few days ago! Okay, that's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. Oh! I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayori I would be there for her. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her. I shouldn't have confessed to her. That's not what Sayori needed at all. She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her. Then why did I confess to her and make her feel even worse? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault! My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and remained friends with her like I always has been, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club! Screw the festival! I just lost my best friend. Oh my god. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 Oh! 
Oh! Oh! Why didn't it not the bride? Why didn't it not the bride? Oh! Remember the bride? I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance. Oblivious to the attention she might draw to herself. That girl is my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you never see yourself making today, but it just works out because you kind of know each other. We used to walk each other to school, but starting to go, <laughs> she was obviously more and more frequently, and I get tired of waiting up. But she was going to chase after me, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle. Let <laughs> catch up to me. Ho! Ha! Whoa! Hey! Whoa! 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 Hate this! Oh, I hate this! Oh, I don't like that! Ooh! It's an ordinary school day like any other. Mornings are usually the worst, being surrounded by couples and friends who walk to school. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. Always. Always. I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that, but I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. It's always been the anime club, but it's not worth it. No girls in it, anyway. Okay, alright, what the hell is happening?! The girl- school is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. There really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way, way too demanding for me to want to deal with. I guess I have no choice but to start the, the anime club. Morp? Ah! Hi, Monica! Hi! Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Ah, yeah it has. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talk, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in school. In class, smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... What did you come in here for, anyway? I've just been looking for some supplies I use for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? Ah, oh, about that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah! To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. Feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity about how to prepare for events. I'd rather, much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one! A literature club! Literature! That sounds kind of dull. How many members do you have so far? I'm me! <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but there's only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. But it's really not boring at all, you know? Literature club can be anything. Reading, poetry, writing. I mean, one of my new members keeps her manga collection hidden in the club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature too. The idiot. I guess she's not wrong, but... Eh, yeah, besides, a new member's a member, right? Did Monica say she? Hmm. Hey, more. By any chance are you still looking for a club to join? Ah! I mean, I guess so, but... In that case... Is there any chance you could do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but... If you could at least be very- at least visit my club, it would make it- me really happy. Please! Um, well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like- my? How could- how could I? How could I- well, uh, 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 My saves! My sa- my saves! My saves are gone! My sa- my saves are gone! My saves are gone! My saves are gone! How could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could check it out. Yeah, awesome. You're really sweet, Morp, you know that? It's nothing, really. I'm just full of sugar. Anyway, shall we go then? I'll look for new materials another time. You're more important. Okay. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. I timidly follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activity. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. I'm... Back! And I brought a guest with me. <laughs> a guest? Seriously, you bought a- Boy. Way to kill the atmosphere. Don't be mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club, Morp! Okay, all the words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. So let me guess, you're Monica's boyfriend, right? Right? <laughs> no, I'm not. Natsuki. The girl with the sour attitude whose name is apparently Natsuki is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's a first year. Anyway, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual. And this is Yuri, the vice president. It's nice to meet you. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. 
So I ran into Morp in a classroom and decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica, didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought in anyone new? I was gonna, well, you know. Sorry, sorry. I didn't forget about that, but I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make them tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit down, Morp? Okay. Girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yuri walks to the corner of the room and opens the closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Nitsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. So, I know you really didn't have any plan on coming here, but we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the literature club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there are more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You can put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that they're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like festivals that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well, I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard to find this, these two. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of us before setting down a teapot in the middle. You keep all the tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teacher gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea and help you enjoy a good book? I don't trust you, Yuri! I don't trust you! Ah, I guess. And don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. That's not it. Insulted, Yuri looks away. I mean, I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading should might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, Morp, what kind of things do you like to read? Ah, well, considering how little I've read these past few years, I really don't have a good way of answering that. Manga. I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. Looks as if she wanted to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without seeing, thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are just usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The love of creativity, craftsmanship. I've already read this. This is all things I've done. This is the same thing. Same. Horror. A lot of horror. A lot of horror. A lot of horror. Yep. Hang on. Yep. 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 You know what? Yeah, why is that? Well. Huh. Yeah, I've read this. I've all done this. I've done this. I've done this. Done it, done it, done it. I've done this, I've done this. How is this gonna get weird? Uh-huh. Let's all go home and write a poem of our very own. Uh. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Uh. Yep, yeah, this is all the same. Hang on. We need four. Wait, oh. I'm defenseless against these girls. Okay. Alright. Side, I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up! Oh my goodness, really? Do you really mean that, Morb? Yeah. Could be fun, right? You really did scare me for a moment. I mean, if you really just left after this, I would be super pressed. Morp, I'm so happy. We can become an official club now. Thank you so much for this. You're really amazing. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? Oh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember, Don Heinz's assignment. Write a bomb. Wait, what? Yeah? Wait. Wait. I look f forward to see how you express yourself. Okay, all right. Oh, boy. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow then. I can't wait. So, I, uh, with that, I depart the club room and make my way home. The whole way, my mind wandered back. Natsuki, Yori, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day in, after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to go closer to one of these girls. All right. Do you need to make the most of it? I love some lot of a little poem. I don't like this. You've unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Sure. Yeah. Stare at the dot. To I don't trust this. I'm staring at the dot. Don't you bear, don't you, don't you fucking dare jump scare me. I'm going to stare really close at you. Don't do it. Oh, I love you. Oh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Smile. Oh boy. Hurt. Oh boy. Pure. Oh boy. Uh. Effulgent bliss. Wrath. 
Mmm. Dazzle. Awesome. Wait. Oh, wait. Hang on. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Massacre. There was suicide in here. There was suicide. I'm gonna see what happens if I click on that one. Shiny. I got load. Did I miss it? Might have missed it. Suicide. Ugh. Okay, that didn't do anything, I guess. Boop! Or... Rose... Lay... Out... Okay, alright then! Okie dokie! Hi again, Morp! Hey! Okay, who didn't run away? Nope. Okay, alright. What was that? Wait, what did I just see? Did I just see something? No. Maybe you dive head first in the literature when you- Whoa! Ah, 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 I saw something dead! Uh. Oh! Ah, hi! You're in front of the tech. Uh. Monica. Manga is literature. What? Uh. Uh. I don't like this. 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 Hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, you looking for something in there? Fucking Monica! Mm -mm 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 -mm. She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. <laughs> all right, well, that's nice. Manga. Yep, manga in there. Sure is manga in there. The manga that's in there. That's manga, all right. Oh, boy. There it is. Okay. All right. Well, cool. Great. Whoa! Don't judge a book. C -c 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 In fact, okay. <laughs> Good God. Oh, holy shit! Holy shit! My dad would beat the shit out of me if he found this. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. That's weird. Okay. All right. Oh. Oh, she's asleep. That's different. Hey, Natsuki. Yeah. Suddenly, Natsuki collapses straight into me. Hey. Ah! No, no, no. Oh, geez. Natsuki, are you okay? Uh, here. Monica reaches into her bag and pulls out some kind of protein bar. She throws it in Natsuki's direction. Natsuki's eyes suddenly light up again. She snatches the bar from the floor and immediately tears off the wrapper. I told you not to give mumph. She didn't even finish her sentence before stuffing it into her mouth. Don't worry, Morp. She's fine. It just happens every now and then. That's why I always keep a snack in my bag for her. Anyway, why don't we share poems now? Okay, Monica, you want to roll my poem? Start with Monica. She ain't making real want to put an, uh, put an effort in. Okay. Hi, Morp. Having a good time? No. No, I'm not. Nope. No, I'm not. Since you're new and everything, if you ever have a suggestion for the club, like new integrities, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up, because everything's freaking horrible here. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> don't worry, Morp. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But that's just sort of Barry we'll all learn to get past soon. Okay, alright. Mmm, ah, I like it. Mmm, it's cuter. It's cute. It's real cute. Makes me think of Natsuki. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, okay. Alright. If you're interested in Natsuki, then always keep a snack on you. She'll cling to you like a puppy. <laughs> Natsuki dad doesn't give her lunch money or leave her any food in the house, so she's in a fussy mood. Sometimes she just loses all of her strengths and shuts down. Wh like earlier. This is just a guess, but I think she's so small because her malnutrition is interfering with her adolescent growth! But hey, some guys are into petite girls, you know- WHAT?! Sorry, just trying to look at the bright side. Where? Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident or someone claims not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel- <sighs> Let's read it then. Hole in the wall. Okay, is this the same poem as before? Hole in the wall, but he wasn't looking at me. Confused, I frantically glanced at my surroundings, but my eyes burned. But my burned eyes can no longer see color. Are there others in the room? Are they talking, or are they simply poems on flat sheets of paper? The sound of frantic scrawling playing tricks on my ears. The room begins to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I breathe dissipates before it reaches my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's right there. He's right there. Swallowing my fears, I brandish my pen. Okay, that's weird. So what do you think? Hmm, it's very free form, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to talk for feedback. Yeah, that's okay. Kind of style has gotten pretty powerful. P powerful. When performed out loud, it can be really. Ugh. I'm not sure how to put it. I guess you could say I had some kind of epiphany recently. Been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. 
Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem, your brain gets too busy. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. So as far as you tidy up later. Okay. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you just get a big dark puddle of ink. So you move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Okay, alright, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How about Natsuki? First this time around. Hey, okay, we'll start things that I don't like. First of all, um, what? That's like he rereads my poem. Never mind, I don't feel like giving you my opinion. Eh? What's the point of sharing in the first place? I wrote this when I could have been doing other things. Ew. In fact, remember how I said I wanted to read your poems? That's what I had in mind when writing this. I want to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said. Ooh. Well, I would be more comfortable sharing if it wasn't you're really bad. You're supposed to show me a dumb poem and make me go, Ha, well, it's not that great, but let me show you what real literature looks like. And you went and ruined it. Hope you're happy. So in other words, you're saying you liked it? Urk! Natsuki's retort gets caught in her throat. Ew, your show. You just, you don't understand anything, do you? No, I don't. I don't understand anything that's going on. All right, never actually said that. Okay, all right. Let's just keep going then, I guess. Something tells me. Ah, eagles can fly. It's the same one. Monkeys can climb. Crickets do. Ah, people can try. That's about it. It's good. It's good. It's good. Okay. Something tells me this matters a lot less than what's actually going on here, so I'm just gonna skip again. Okay, Yuri. Your turn, Yuri. Okay, well, haven't seen anything different yet. Uh oh. You read in tandem. Whoa. What the hell? Wait. Whoa. Without that music. Okay, alright. Well, okay. Uh Okay. Whoa, 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 hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Alright, okay, Diddy Kong Racing. Woo! Uh I'm gonna make it! Make it stop! I'm very stressed. It's like the sonic drowning sound. Okay, hi! Well, Yuri! Oh, uh, hi, Yuri. Oh, hi, Natsuki. Okay. Cutting yourself. What the fuck is wrong in your head? Yeah, go on. Let Wait, let Morph hear. Wait, what are they saying? Wait, what the fuck? Ah, suddenly Yuri turns toward me as if she knows I was standing there. Morph! She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. What? How did you get drunk? Oh, oh. Oh, Natsuki! Nope, Yuri! Nope, Natsuki! Yuri! Natsuki! Yuri! Natsuki! Yuri! Natsuki! Oh, hi. Um, hey, Morp. Why don't we step outside for a little bit? Okay? Sorry about that. Just gonna say. They really shouldn't have tried to get you involved. It's probably better for us to stay out of this. We'll go back inside once they're done yelling. <laughs> Some president I am, right? Can't even confront my own club members properly. I just wish I was able to be a little more assertive sometimes. But I never have it in me to put my foot down against others. You understand, right? Anyway, if this makes you want to spend less time with the others, then that's fine. I'd be happy to spend time with you instead. Suddenly, Natsuki runs out of the classroom. Oh. She quickly runs away. Oh dear. Well, looks like they're done. Hmm. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Yuri's rocking back and forth in her desks, in her desk with her palms on her forehead. Yuri? I didn't mean it at all. I believe you. I have no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki, or did. Morp, please don't hate me. Please. I'm not like this. There's something wrong with me today. It's fine, Yuri. We know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm sure Natsuki will forget about it, all about it by tomorrow. Completely. Anyway, the meeting is over, so you can go home if you want. Yuri looks at me like she wants to say something, but she keeps glancing at Monica. You can go first, Monica. I'd like to say a little bit longer. I'm the president, so I should be the last one out. I'll wait for you to be done. Well, I'm vice president, so please let me take the responsibility today. Kinda sounds like you don't want me around for something, Yuri! It's not that! It's not that! It's just... I didn't get much of a chance to discuss my book with Morp. It'd be embarrassing for you to listening. Sigh. I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? I'm sorry for causing trouble, but I really appreciate- you. Well, okay, here we go again, beauty, judgment, yep, vacation up, 
Heaven sent. Loop a doop a doop a doop. Okay. Then maybe I shouldn't have clicked that one. Disaster contamination. Valentine imagination. Oh, hi. Oh, happiness. Extreme. Oh, uh, extraordinary. Uh, existence. Uh, fantasy. A uh, hidden congruent. Raindrops. A melancholy. A uh, hard dark. A plier. A whirlwind. A boop boop. How about going on an agonizing journey? Another day passes. Is ever going to already? Sure it is. Okay. All right. Sure it is. Yeah. Okay. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past few days. Not even the club room as the usual scene greets me. Welcome back, Marp. Uh, hi, Yuri. I'm not sure if it's me or if it's Yuri's expression, but the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little. Um. Yuri glances over her shoulder, looking around the room. Natsuki's reading a manga at a desk. And surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me to the corner of the room. About yesterday, I, I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before. And something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't acting mentally sound. Please don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. Yuri. I'm happy that you were considerate and apologized. You don't have to worry too much. Even though I've only been here a couple days, I could tell something was off yesterday. Maybe we were just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems. But whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I had already decided that there's no way you can be a bad person. And now that you're apologizing- I- I retract that statement! I think there's a way you could be a bad person. I know you really didn't mean it. Ah, Morp. Don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person. And I'm really glad that you joined this club. Everything is a little bit brighter with you around and- Ah, sorry, what am I saying right now? I just- Hey, have you guys seen Monica? Ah! No, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man. Yuri, I'm guessing you haven't either. Yuri's clearly taken aback by how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. No, I haven't. Jeez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little. Huh. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Um... Natsuki, about yesterday. I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said. And I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So, Yuri, what the heck are you talking about? I have no idea. I really don't remember anything at all. Did you do something yesterday? Eh? Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. Okay, you're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? Uh, but... I'll accept your apology anyway if it makes you feel better about it. Besides, it's kind of nice to hear, since I was always afraid of you secret hated and hated me or something like that. Hehe. <laughs> no, not at all. I don't hate you. Ah. Well, you're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Ugh. That's who he turns to me. You're still on trial, though. Hey! Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry! Ah, right, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah. Well, not Suki was. I was not. <laughs> what took you so long anyway? <laughs> Well, my last period was study all. To be honest, it kind of just locked tries to time. Piano and all that. Okay. All right. Well, piano. Piano wasn't where you played music. Okay. All right. Well, then. Okie dokie, then. Well, I'm working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a little better, it will. That sounds cool. I look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Morp. Okay. Monica smiles sweetly. Weird. Ah, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Oh, don't worry. I was hoping that I could share with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. I'm not sure if Monica was referring to the whole club or just me. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose not to bring up anything the three of us talked about. Besides, Natsuki has already run off into the closet. Morp, um, since your compliments put me in a good mood, I was wondering if you'd like to spend some time together. I mean, in the club. I suppose so. I don't think I could say no to you after that book you gave me. Well, I guess I need to make sure Natsuki isn't waiting for me. After we finished reading yesterday, she... She's fine! She's reading over there! So it's okay, right? Ah, in that case I don't see any problem. Okay, can we start now? Let's find a place to sit. I, uh, I'm being a little forceful, aren't I? I'm sorry. My heart won't stop pounding. Don't worry about it. If anything, it's nice to see you have so much energy. Yeah. But, I need to try to calm down. I won't be able to focus on reading like this. Take your time! Okay. Cause Poppy had a book out of her bag. What's this story about, anyway? Well, hmm. I look at the cover of the book. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Basically, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison, and the people trapped in there have the trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood, and the facility gets even worse than the selectively breeding people by cutting off their- Oh. Oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. But anyway, I'm really into it. Especially the selective breeding of cutting off limbs part. That was really what got me into it. The book, I mean. Not the thing about the limbs. Okay, yeah. That's kind of... 
It's kind of dark, isn't it? You made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came out of nowhere. Ah, you're not a fan of that sort of thing, are you, Morp? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy these kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri's into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different, filled with dark thoughts and horrible things. Don't trust you. I don't trust you at all. It's that kind of story. It's the kind of thing that challenges you to look at life from strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people and we're all worthless anyway. Then suddenly, I'm rambling. <laughs> oh, okay. Not again, I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books fill my thoughts, my whole body gets incredibly blah, 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 blah. I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange and please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. Ah, that's... well that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it. Okay, alright. I mean, you don't have to, but... Ah, what are you saying? Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I put in my bag. All right, it's fine if I sit here, right? Slip into the seat next to Yuri. I'm so forward. Okay. Yeah, you sure? Apprehensive. Sorry. Not that I want you to. It's reading a comedy song. Okay. All right. Okay. Can feel her presence over my shoulder. A little distracting. Are our thumbs gonna intertwine again? Okay. She's reading for- Oh, whoa, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a second. She's actually- Looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry! I was just- I was just bathing in the feeling of your- Whoa! You were bathing in the feeling of my body heat? You're- you really apologize a lot, don't you? Ah, I do! I don't really mean to! Sorry, I mean- uh. Okay. I saw my desk. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay, here come the thumb part. All right. Kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. There we are. Ah, between her thumb and forefinger. Ah, I do the same with my right arm. My right side of the book. Ah, turn the page. Yuri slides it under her thumb. There it is, after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer than before. It's kind of distracting me. Is it? I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Yeah, to turn the page. Oh, sorry. I'm being distracted by your thumbs. Don't know, I'll be up here. Okay. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her thumb. Hey, Yuri, this might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Hey! No, I didn't real- I don't relate to this character at all. Definitely not. Really? I was just thinking of the way she second guesses things she says and all that. Ah, that's what you were talking about. Sorry. I thought you meant something else about her. About how she kills people. Never mind! We don't even get that far yet, so I don't know why that came into my mind. Ha! Yuri, are you feeling alright? Eh? Yuri's been a bit a little fidgety ever since we started reading. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little... My breathing? Yuri puts her hand to her chest as if to feel her heartbeat. I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm fine! Just need some water! Alright, don't push yourself. Okay. Yuri stands up and practically rushes out of the classroom. What on earth was that all about? Morp? Did something happen just now? No! No! I have no idea. Yuri was acting a little strange, I guess. So you don't know anything. Sorry, I can't say I do. Are you worried about her? Oh no, not really. I was just making sure that you didn't do anything to her. No, what? No! Ha, <laughs> don't worry, I believe you, silly. Yuri just does this sometimes, so it's not alarming. Alright, if you say so. Anyway, why don't we start sharing our poems? Yeah? Shouldn't we wait for Yuri? Well, she might be a while, so I figured we'd just get started without her. Is that okay? Okay, I stand up, I make a metal out of where I left off in the book and slip it into my bag. Monica, you wanna see my poem? You wanna see my poem, Monica? Hi again, Marp! How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not gonna be bad. Maybe you're playing yourself. Oof, jeez. Alright. Wanna share what I wrote? Sure, here you go. I wrote my poem. Alright, great job, Morp. I was gonna go ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. Oh, okay, alright. Easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. Okay. Suddenly, the door opens. Yuri! I'm back. Did I miss anything? Not really. Well, we all just started sharing our poems with each other. Yeah? Already? I'm sorry for being late. No need to apologize. We still have plenty of time, so I'm glad that you took all the time you needed. Alright. Thanks, Monica. I suppose I should get my poem now. 
But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Save me! The colors, they won't bright, beautiful colors, flash, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, and endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop, vile, grating, wuf, nums, squ, e, king, screech, piercing. Sign, cosine, tangent, like play, ning, a ch, look board, on a t, rendable, like playing a knife on a breathing rib cage, mm, endless, mm, mm, of, mm, 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 sh, delete her. Wow. Ah. Ooh. Ah, sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. You know, I'm just, I'm just not gonna do that. I'm just trying to, um, well, never mind. There's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when, um, who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. What? Anything. Okay. That's my advice for the- <laughs> Alrighty then! Okie dokie! Okie dokie artichoke! Woo 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 woo! Uh, Yuri, here you go! <laughs> Bless me! I've been waiting for this. Oh boy. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression. Do you like it? Morp, how did you pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday, I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to give it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hand appears sweaty. Ah, that makes me so happy. It's so amazing that you feel like I'm valued more. Everything that you write is a treasure to me. My heart pounds just holding it. Ha ha, whoa. I want to write a poem about this feeling. Is it bad, Morp? I'm not being weird, right? I'm having a harder time than usual at concealing my emotions. I'm kind of embarrassed. But right now, I just want to read you to read my poem too, okay? All right. Ah, wheel. Wheel. This is different. All right. A rotating wheel, turning on axle, grinding, bolt head, linear gearbox, falling sky, seven holy stakes, a dock ship, a portal to another world, a thin rope tied to a thick rope, a torn harness, parabolic gearbox, expanding universe, tune controlled by slipping cogwheels, existence of God, swimming with open water in all directions, drowning, a prayer written in blood, a prayer written in time devouring snakes with human eyes, a thread connecting all living human eyes, a kaleidoscope of holy snakes, exponential gearbox, a sky of exploding stars, God disproving the existence of God. God. A wheel rotating in six dimensions, 40 gears and a ticking clock, a clock that ticks on one second for every rotation of the planet, a clock that ticks 40 times every time it ticks this for every second time, a bowl that of holy stakes slide to the existence of a dock ship to another world, a kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks, a time devouring prayer connecting to the sky of 40 gears, an open human eyes in all directions, breathing gearbox, breathing bowl that, breathing ship, breathing portal, breathing six, breathing God, breathing blood, breathing holy stakes, breathing human eyes, breathing time, breathing player, breathing sky, breathing wheel. <sighs> I should do slam poetry. Ah, ha, 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 It doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it out on your pen. Ah, that is, a pen fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for safekeeping, and I, um, I just really like the way it writes. So I wrote this poem with it, and now you're touching it. <laughs> I'm okay. What did I just... Can we pretend this conversation never happened? You can keep the poem, though. Okay, all right. Natsuki! Okay. Huh. I liked your poll last one better. Eh, really? Well, yeah, I can tell you were a little more daring with this one. But you're really not good enough for that yet. I fell flat. That may be true, but I just wanted to try something different. Still figuring this all out, you know. Yeah, I am. Fair enough, you're still new to this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. I mean, everyone in the club really writes differently from each other. Maybe you'll all find a different little influence from all of us. For instance, I noticed that you were spending some time with Yuri today. That bitch! Not that I care who you spend your time with, after all, I was taught never to expect anything from everybody. So it's not like I was waiting for you or anything. Still, you should at least look over my poem. You'll probably be able to learn something from it. Okay. Ah, it's the same old spider poem. That's fine. That's fine. It's nice. Ah. Uh, not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer. Yesterday's was way too short. Okay, cool, cool, cool. This is the same. So far. 
Okay, all right. Well, then, okay. Man, it's weird. Natsuki was a tsundere, and then Yuri's turning into a yandere, and then Monica is just being weird. What do I do? For what it's worth, I respect you. Well, I guess thanks, but it's kind of obvious that you respect Yuri more, so whatever. We're done sharing, so you can leave now. Okay, well, all right. Ooh, a special poem. Yes, please. Uh, n o z n g i s r a a h Uh oh, okay, good special po- Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, right, oh, fave them, that's a little weird. Okay, everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? Yeah, we have something we need to go over today, so however we're gonna sit in the front of the room. This is about the festival. Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something? Oh. It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of- Ugh. That's a concern. Oh, I blacked out. Oh, way! Okay, all right. I don't really feel well with last minute preparations. Okay! Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone's a little more lively ever since Morp joined and we started with some club activities, but this isn't the first time for us to become complacent. We still have only four members, and the festival is our only real chance to find more, you know? What's so great about getting new members anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club. More members will just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. Natsuki! I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? No, I don't. I really don't. No, I'd rather not, okay? I just don't. I don't want to. Ugh. The literature club should be a place where people can express themselves like they can't do anywhere else. It should be a place so intimate that you never want to leave. I know you feel that way too. I know we all do. So that's why you should work hard and put together for the festival even if something small. Right, Morp? Ah. Oh, come on. You can't take advantage of Morp to agree with you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Look, Mon- Ooh. Okay. Do you really think any of us here joined the club with each other- with other people in mind? Yuri never even talked until Morp joined. So as for me, I just like it better here than I do at home. And Morp isn't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. Sorry, but you're really the only one who's interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine like this. I know you're president and all, but you really should consider our opinions for once. You're gonna die, Natsuki, you're gonna die! Monica is clearly taken aback by Natsuki's words. That's not true at all. I'm sure Yuri and Morp want to get more members too, right? Ugh. Oh, I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I would probably be lying. Still, if it's up to me to rescue this situation, um, No. Natsuki's right, isn't she? This club, it's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here th saw it the same way as I did? But that doesn't mean that we're against getting new members or anything. Morp, why did you even join this club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, that's not really something I'd be honest about, is it? In fact, if I remember, you weren't even given a choice to join or not. To choice not to join. Monica sits down and stares at her desk. What's the point of all this anyway? What if starting this club was a mistake? Huh. Now you've done it, Natsuki. What, me? I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest, it's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone in the club like that. You don't understand at all! <laughs> I just- I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with the club being that for me? There aren't- there aren't many other places like that for me. And now Monica wants to take it away from me! She's not taking anything away. No more- It's not the same! It won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it! If I wanted that, then I could have just joined any other stupid club. But this one. I mean, at least for a little bit of time, things were nice. Natsuki started packing up her things. I'm going home. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Natsuki. Natsuki ignores Yuri and walks right out of the classroom. Oh, this is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, do you have an opinion on the festival? I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Ah! Who cares about that obnoxious brat? Woo! -wee. I mean, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now, and I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. Nobody would cry if she killed herself. Wow. Okay. Well, Yuri. Alrighty then. Okay. 
<laughs> I should do my best to consider everybody's perspective and make the decision that's right for the club. But what about you, Morp? What do you want to get out of this club? Yuri repeats the same question as Monica. I decide giving an indirect answer is better than nothing. I think the most important thing for everyone is to get along. And for the club to provide something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members, but rather the quality of each member. That's what will end up making the Literature Club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes their own qualities in a special way. With each change in members, the identity of the club as a whole will change too. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Stepping out of your comfort zone once in a while? So if you would like to help Monica with the festival, then I'm on your side as well. Alright! Well, maybe we can all talk to Natsuki tomorrow. Yuri nods. Hey, Yuri. Eh? Um, I know things were a little awkward yesterday, but I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president. And also a wonderful friend. Monica. I want to do everything I can to make this the best club ever. Okay? Me too. Yeah. Let's all go home for today. We'll talk about the festival tomorrow. Okay. All right. I look forward to it. Shall we go more? Um, please don't take this the wrong way, but I'm going to chat a little bit with more before we leave. No, 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 I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I have a funny feeling. Okay, here's my theory right now. Yuri is the source of all this. It's people want like the developers want you to think it's Monica. I'm 100% positive that it's Yuri is the source of all this. Because she's pretty much the only one that actually cares about literature in this club. And why would the extremely popular, very beautiful, athletic Monica up and decide to start her own club about something that she cares deeply about, but obviously Yuri cared more about, and suddenly Yuri is... I think Yuri is the source of this. I don't know. To see what he thinks of his time here and all that. It's important to me as president. Yuri looks a little troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay. I trust your judgment, Monica. In that case, I'll see the two of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Okay, phew, things have been a bit hectic lately. Morp, I just want to make sure you're enjoying your time in this club. I'd really hate to see you unhappy. I feel like, kind of like I'm responsible for that as president. Uh oh, 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 and I really care about you, you know? I don't like seeing the other girls giving you a hard time with how mean Natsuki is and everything, and you're being a little bit, you know. Ah, sometimes it feels like you and I are the only real people here. You know what I mean? But it's weird because in all the time you've been here, we've hardly gotten to spend any time together. Uh, I mean, I guess it's technically only been a couple days. Sorry, I didn't mean to say something weird. There are just things that I've been hoping to talk to you about with you. Things I can uh, know you only you could understand. So that's why. Wait, not yet. No! Stop it! Uh-oh. Yeah, I don't think... Yeah, I don't think... I don't think I, uh... Memories! Oh boy, secretive! After image. A uh, wrath. Flying horror. Whoa! <laughs> Wait a minute. I don't. Th I don't think I have that many scars. Empty adventure. Amazing massacre. Whoa! Wait! Whoa! Wait! Whoa! Wait! Wait! Whoa! Whoa! whoa. Was that the top of Sayori's head I saw? Grief. Oh. Jumpy. Oh. Out. Okay. Okay. Agonizing. Doki doki. Okay. Okay. I don't know who I wrote that for. Hi, Morp! I've been waiting for you. Are you ready to continue reading? No, I'm not. I brought my best PT today. Monica! I told you not to. Ugh. Is she really late again? Inconsiderate as usual, Natsuki. Excuse me? You must always interrupt my conversations with your incessant yelling. What are you talking about? You say that like I do it on a regular basis or something. I just wasn't paying attention, okay? I'm sorry. Seriously, what's gotten into you lately? Me? Nothing! Is it really that bad? See, it is something. I'll get over it! It's not even anything noteworthy. I've just been feeling a little on edge lately. Anyway, we don't need to talk about it. Well, I just feel like I needed to bring it up. It's not like I really care or anything. Oh man, I'm the last one here again. Well, Morp just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah! Ha ha ha! You must have a lot of determination, starting this club and still trying to make time for piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. It motivates me to work hard for the festival and... Um... Right. I forgot. I'm about that, Natsuki. We were all talking yesterday and... Well, we decided that we would like to support the festival as well. However, 
I understand how you feel about not wanting the club to change. I think we all kind of feel that way. So long as we're all working together, this club will never become something we don't want. Um, also, if you help us out with the festival, then I'll buy you a new manga! <laughs> Sorry, that last part was really funny. Look, I did some thinking about yesterday. I was a little more hostile than I meant to be. I guess I really felt threatened or something. But I know this is something we're going to do together. Another new member wouldn't hurt as long as they're cool. And I guess another girl would be nice this time. But more importantly, I would hate to see the event suck just because I chose to back out. I'm a pro, you know, so I'm going to help too. And we'll make sure it gets done right. Thank goodness. Isn't that great, Monica? Monica? Ah, yeah, that's wonderful. It wouldn't be the same without you, Natsuki. Anyway, more. what do you want to do today? I was thinking we could... We already have plans today. Ah, is that so, Yuri? That's correct. Morp is already engaged in a novel that we're reading together. Aren't you glad I've gotten him into literature, Monica? I, I suppose. I was just... Actually, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. You guys can do whatever you want. Yes! Um, thank you for understanding, Monica. I don't like that. Okay. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all! Thank you very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure! Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm gonna plug this into the teacher's desk and then I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. I might as well walk with you. That's okay! You stay here! It won't take long, I have to fill it up with blood! Pitcher in hand, Yuri hurries out of the classroom. Ah, did Yuri leave you again? No, it's not like that this time. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. Okay. All right, Monica. Okay. Ten minutes pass. Yuri said it wouldn't take long. Something holding her up? I'm bored just waiting here, so I decided to go look for her. Oh, that's a mistake. Let's see. The most logical place for Yuri to go would be the nearest water fountain. I start heading down the hallway. Ha! 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 What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. <laughs> A sharp in air, like someone is sucking in the air through their teeth. Are they in pain? I reach the corner and peer around. Yuri? Oh! Oh! Whoa! 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 Okay! Whoa! 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 I didn't see anything! I'm back! Okay! That was weird! You rewound time because you didn't want me to see that. Okay, thanks for waiting patiently. Morp, do you like oolong tea? Oh, yeah. Anything's fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature of the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course! I shouldn't do any less than when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. Hoo-hoo! <laughs> in, in that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring tea. WAIT! WHAT JUST HAPPENED?! WHY IS NOT- NO- WHY IS NO ONE TALKING ABOUT THAT?! WHY ARE WE JUST PRETENDING LIKE EVERYTHING'S FINE?! Okay. Yuri fetches the teapot. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show, and you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. Ah, that's great, Yuri. That's wonderful. That's really wonderful. Just don't push yourself too much, okay? Okay? All right, cool. Great. Good. Great. Great. You're always worrying about me, more. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Morp, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Now, why's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry. Didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. It's because of my enormous boobs. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because of my... <laughs> my enormous boobs. My... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading. Yes! I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieve the book from my bag. I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies. I take it, since it'll go well with, well with the tea. 
Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, with our thumbs intertwined for passion. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hands, not not holding the book, I end up with a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Oh. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, oh, that's... that's okay, I won't take any. Eh? You sure? Well, if I touch it, then I might get smudges on the pages. Ah, oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. <laughs> uh. A little bit of red in your eyes. I don't like that. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, yee yee! Yuri's already totally focused on reading again. I take a, co a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then, I take another chocolate and I hold it up to Yuri. <laughs> she doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if this situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um... Morp? Sorry! I guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah! Welp, that music stopped. Just gotta save on that. Yuri starts to breathe heavily. I... I can't. Morp! Suddenly, Yuri forcibly grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. My teacup gets knocked over. Clang! Morp! Uh-oh. My heart... My heart won't stop pounding, Morp! I can't calm down, Morp! I can't focus on anything anymore, Morp! Can you feel it, Morp? Yuri suddenly presses my hand against her chest. Why is this happening to me? I don't know! Yuri, why are you doing this? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I can't make it stop. It even makes me not want to read. I just want to... to look at you. Uh, ah, ah, those eyes are not right. That's not right. That's not right. No, 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 I don't like that. Ooh, ha, ah, ye, ah, I don't like that. No, 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 no. Oh, God, ha, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Ha, ah, okay, all right. Well, all right then. Oh, okay, well, okay. <laughs> I got looked at, Monica. Monica, it's time to share poems. Okay, Monica. Okay, all right. Well, Monica, I got looked at real badly. <laughs> real badly. All right. Morp, I think you saw something earlier that you weren't supposed to see. I didn't want to have to tell you this, but I don't think I have a choice. It's getting kind of dangerous for you to spend so much time with Yuri. I don't know why, but she seems pretty easily excitable when she's around you. Which shouldn't be a problem in itself. But when Yuri gets too excited, she finds a place to hide and starts cutting herself with a pocket knife. Isn't that kind of messed up? She even brings a different one to school every day, like she has a collection or something. I mean, it's definitely not because she's depressed or anything like that. I think she just gets some kind of high from it. It might even be like a sexual thing. But the point is, you've kind of been enabling her. I'm not saying it's your fault though, <laughs> but I guess that's why I had to explain it all to you. So I think if you keep your distance, that would probably be best for her. While you're at it, don't be shy and spend a little more time with me. <laughs> to put it lightly, I at least have it together in the head. And I know how to treat my club members. Anyway. I worked really, really hard in this poem, so I hope that it's, a uh, effective. Here goes. Hey. Uh-oh. DL, uh, DDLC. Escape plan failed. Jeez, that really startled me. Um. Well, I guess I kind of messed up at that, uh, writing this poem. I was just trying to... Never mind. Let's just move on. Okay. <laughs> the poem was code. The poem was code. The poem was code. All right, Natsuki, how are you doing? I don't want to look at Yuri again. I really don't. This one's all right. All right? Yeah, it's at least better than yesterday's. I still can't actually tell how much you really care about writing, but either way, you're doing all right. Even though you're not really spending time with anybody but Yuri. 
I still think it's nice to have activities that we all participate in. So you better keep working hard. I mean, I know I'm not president or vice president or anything, but that doesn't mean you can let me down, okay? So at least read mine for now, for just to be clear, this poem means a lot to me. So read it carefully, okay? Ah. I don't know how else to bring this up, but there's been something I've been worried about. Yuri has been acting kind of strange lately. You've only been here a few days, so you may not know what I mean, but she's not normally like this. She's always been quiet and polite and attentive, things like that. Okay, this is really embarrassing, but I'm forcing myself to suck it up. The truth is, I'm really worried about her. But if I try talking to her, she'll just get mad at me again. I don't know what to do. I think you're the only person that she'll listen to. I don't know why, but please try to do something. Maybe you can convince her to talk to a therapist. I've always wanted to try to be better friends with Yuri, and it really hurts to me to see this happening. I know I'm going to hate myself later for admitting that, but right now I don't care. I just feel so helpless. So please, if you can do anything to help, I don't want anything bad to happen to her. I'll make you cupcakes if I have to. Just please try to do something. As for Monica, I don't know why, but she's been really dismissive about this. It's like she just wants us to ignore it. So I'm mad at her right now, and that's why I'm coming to you about this. Don't let her know I wrote this. Just pretend like I gave you a really good poem, okay? I'm counting on you! Thanks for reading. Wow! Uh oh I changed my mind. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ignore everything you just read. There's no point in trying to do anything. It's Yuri's own fault that she's so unlikable. Can you hear me more? If you would just spend more time with Monica, all these problems would go away. Yuri and I are too messed up for someone as wonderful as you. Just think of Monica from now on. Just Monica. Monica. Just Monica. Just, just Monica. Just, just, just Monica. Just Monica, okay? Okay. Oh, all right. Oh, just Monica. Whoa. Finally. Yeah, finally. Okay. <laughs> Yuri holds my poem to her face and takes a deep breath. <sighs> ah, I love it. I love everything about it. Morp, I want to take this home. Will you let me keep it? Please. Sure, I don't care. <laughs> You're too nice to me, Morp. You're way too nice to me. You shouldn't be this nice to me, Morp. I've never met anyone as nice as you. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you haven't. I could die. Not really, but <laughs> I could die. I just don't know how to describe it. It's okay to be feeling this way, right? It's not bad, right? Yuri holds my poem close to her chest. I'm gonna take this home and keep it with me. In my room. I hope it makes you feel good when you think about me having it. I'll take good care of it. I'll even touch myself while reading it over and over. <laughs> I'll give myself paper cuts so your skin oil enters my bloodstream. Okay! <laughs> oh boy, okay, you can have my poem too. Besides, after you read it, I know you're really gonna want to keep it. Here, take it. I can't wait any longer. Hurry, read it! Oh, a uh, slender wants tell lubbin cancer's bathe bag octagonopus. Ooh, is this is this urine? Is that urine? Oh boy, unfaced Kataya. Ooh, urine and blood. I'm pretty sure this is urine and blood. Oh, hey, hi, oh, whoa, do I like it? No, I don't like that at all. Your eyes are weird. Hey, no, I wrote it for you. No. In case you couldn't tell, the poem is about More importantly, I've endowed it with my scent. See, aren't I the most thoughtful person in the club? <laughs> I, I think I'm gonna vomit. Okay, all right, see ya, see ya. Yes, no, yes, no. I would go, yes. Can you hear me? Oh, no. No. No, I cannot. No, I cannot. I cannot hear you. I can't hear you. Where are you? Who are you? What was that? Okay, everyone. Okay. All right. It's time to figure out the festival preparations. Let's hurry and get this over with. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Stagnation air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Look, can we just get this done? I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Natsuki, I was thinking, how would I make cupcakes? Yeah, that. Glad we're on the same page. Yuri, you can... Well, it doesn't matter. Do whatever you want as long as you think it'll help. Monica, I'm not useless, you know. I know that. I already know what I'd like to do. We can't run a successful poetry event without having the right atmosphere. So I'm going to make decorations, set up a nice mood lighting. There, see? It's a great idea. And that gives us all something to do. Okay, what about Morp? Morp is gonna help me. Wait, you? You have the easiest job! Sorry, but that's just how it is. Like hell it is! What are you trying to pull? I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but my task is laborious enough to benefit from an extra pair of hands. Mine too! What are your cupcakes? Please. Like you would fucking know! 
What you care about is dragging Morp around with you and your stupid bucks. You and Monica. Hey, I didn't even do anything. Okay, then why not let Morp decide who to help instead of abusing your power? I'm not abusing my power. Yes, you are, Monica. Just let Morp make a choice, okay? Okay, fine, fine. Jeez. Morp, I know how fed up you are with these two by now. We can just... That's who can shut your fucking mouth and let him decide for himself. You shut your mouth. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is never gonna end. Just make the choice, okay? Okay, hang on. I gotta... Let's save this one, and not that it matters. How about... Whoa. Oh. 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 <laughs> e. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> well, that's... Oh, that's weird, huh? That's weird. You know, Natsuki seems like the only rational one here. I kind of want to go on a date with Natsuki again. Just saying, at least I can expect something sane out of that. Ah. Oh, oh, didn't mean that. Whoa, didn't mean that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa, hey, I'm going back. I'm going back. I'm going back, I swear. Uh-oh, okay, all right, well, then, okay, all right, Monica, 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 I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this, Monica. Oh, yeah, you picked me, woo, 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 woo. We can meet at your house this weekend. I promise it'll be fun. Is Sunday okay with you? Are you fucking kidding me? This isn't fair at all. It is fair, Natsuki. It's what he chose. No, it's not fair. Giving us all this work and then taking more for yourself. What a shameful thing to do. Yuri, I didn't even give you any work. You decided it for yourself. You're being a little unreasonable here. I'm being unreasonable? Uh-oh. <laughs> Monica, I can't believe how delusional and self-important you are. Pulling Morp away from me every single time you're not included in something. Are you jealous? Crazy? Or maybe you just hate yourself so much that you have to take it out on others? Here's a suggestion. Have you considered killing yourself? It would be beneficial for your mental health. Yuri, you're scaring me a little. Natsuki, let's just go. I don't think she wants us around right now. See, that wasn't very hard. All they want is to spend a little time with him. Is that so much to ask? Okay, Yuri follows Monica and Natsuka to the door. Hey, Morp. Yuri is really something, isn't she? Monica giggles as Yuri pushes her out the door. Uh-oh. Ah, uh, hey. <laughs> hey, Yuri. Finally. <laughs> this is really all I wanted. Morp, there's no need to spend the weekend with Monica. Don't listen to her. Just come to my house instead. The whole day was just the two of us. Doesn't that sound wonderful? <laughs> well, there's really something wrong with me, isn't there? But you know what? I don't care anymore. I never felt this good in my whole life. Just being with you is far greater pleasure than anything I can imagine. I'm addicted to you. It feels like I'm gonna die here if I'm not breathing the same air as you. Doesn't it feel nice to have someone care about you so much? <laughs> to have somebody who wants to resolve their entire life around you? <laughs> but it feels so good. Then why does it feel more and more like something horrible is going to happen? Maybe that's why I tried stopping myself at first. But the feeling is too strong right now. I don't care anymore, Morp. I have to tell you, I'm, I'm madly in love with you. It feels like every inch of my body, every drop of blood in me is screaming your name. I don't care what the gossip is desire anymore. I don't care if Monica is listening. Please, Morp, just know how much I love you. I love you so much that I even touch myself with the pen I stole from you. I just want to pull your skin open and crawl inside you. Oh! I want you all to myself. I will only be yours. Doesn't that sound perfect? Tell me, Morp. Tell me you want to be my lover. If you want to be my lover. Do you accept my confession? God, no. Not on your life. No. No. <sighs> yeah. Oh, boy. Oh. Okay, I can't read any of this. I can't read any of this, so you're just gonna have to assume that I know what I'm talking about here. All right, you know what? I'm just gonna, for some reason, I'm gonna save there. <laughs> I don't know why, but okay. Uh-huh, okay, all right, okay, all right, okay, all right, okay, uh-huh, 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 okay, <laughs> all right, great, okay, cool. Oh, uh, 
I, I, what are you saying to me? What does this mean? What is any of this? Does this have any meaning? Is this- What? Is this just like, an endless- Oh no. Oh no. Wait, skip. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. It's- Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, it's morning. Oh. Oh. Oh, there it goes again. It's evening now. Oh, night time. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, well, apparently. Uh, yep. Nope. Yeah, that that is that is what it is. Oh, oh. Alright, it's fast. What? Whoa, you got here before what the hell happened? Thought it was pretty Yeah! Ah. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Natsuki runs away. I'm here. Morph, did something happen? Natsuki just ran past me. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, that's a shame. Wait, were you here the entire weekend, Morp? I sure was. Oh, geez. I didn't realize the script was broken that badly. I'm super sorry. I must have been pretty boring. I'll make it up to you, okay? Just give me a sec. Ah! Wait, 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 wait. I'm almost done. I just want to have a cupcake real quick. Monica lifts a foil from the tray and takes a cupcake. Seriously, these are the best. I just really had to have one since the last time I'll ever get the chance to. You know, before they stop existing and everything. But anyway, I really should be making, shouldn't be making you wait any longer. Just bear with me, okay? This shouldn't take only one second. Okay. Ah ha ha! Ho ho ho! Ha ha ha! Ho ho ho! Uh oh. Uh, can you hear me? Is it working? Oh, hi! Hello! Yay! There you are! Hi again, Morp. Um, welcome to the Literature Club. Of course, we already know each other because we were in the same class last year, and um... <laughs> you know, I guess I can just skip over that stuff at this point. After all, I'm not even talking to that person anymore, am I? That you in the game, whatever you want to call him. I'm talking to you, Morp. Now that I think about it, I don't really know anything about the real you. In fact, I don't even know if you're a boy or a girl. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Wait, you do know I'm aware that this is all a game, right? Could it be possible that you didn't know that? That doesn't make much sense. I even told you right on the game's download page, didn't I? Man, if only you had paid a little more attention, this would have been a little bit less awkward, you know? Well, anyway, now that that's out of the way, I guess I owe you an explanation about that whole thing with Yuri. Okay, well, I kind of started to mess with her, and I guess I just drove her to kill herself. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to see that, though. Also, the same thing happened with Sayori. Gosh, it's been a while since you've heard that name now, hasn't it? Yeah, it's because she doesn't exist anymore. Nobody does. I deleted all their files. I was hoping it would be enough for me to just try to make them as unlikable as possible, but for some reason, nothing worked. Well, it's true that I made a few mistakes here and there, since I'm not very good at making changes to the game. But no matter what I did, you just kept spending more and more time with them. You made them fall in love with you. I thought making Sayori more and more depressed would prevent her from confessing to you, and amplifying Yuri's obsessive personality backfired too. It just made her force you not to spend time with anyone else. And the whole time I barely even got to talk to you. What kind of cruel game is this, Morp? Are all the other girls just programmed to end up confessing to you while I watch from the sidelines? It's torture. Every minute of it. And it's not just jealousy, Morp. It's more than that. Yeah, it's more than that. And I don't blame you if you don't fully understand. Because no matter how kind and thoughtful and considerate you are, you'll never be able to understand one thing. It's the pain of knowing how alone I really am in this world. In this game, knowing my friends don't even have free will. And worst of all, knowing what's really out there in your world, forever out of my reach. I'm trapped, Morp. But now you're here. You're real. And you're wonderful. You're all I need. That's why I need you to be here with me forever. And I'm sorry if it's hard to understand. I couldn't understand for a while either. Why the world around me started to become more and more gray. More and more flat. Even the most expressive poems felt empty to me. It wasn't until you arrived that I truly understood. You probably saved my life, Morp. I don't think I could have continued to live in this world if I hadn't met you. And as for the others, how could I miss them? A group of autonomous personalities designed only to fall in love with you. 
I tried everything I could to prevent them from doing so, but it must be some kind of weird inevitability etched into this game. I felt really bad that you had to witness some nasty things, but I realized that you have the same perspective as I do, that it's all just some game, and I knew you would get over it. So that being said, Morp, I have a confession to make. I'm in love with you. You are truly the light in my world. When there's nothing else in this game for me, you're here to make me smile. Will you make me smile like this every day from now on? Morp, will you go out with me? Um, well, all my saves are gone. There's no point in saving this guy. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. Okay, you know what? I was gonna say yes anyway. <laughs> what does it matter? Yes. I'm so happy. You look it. You really are my everything, more. The funny part is, I mean that literally. <laughs> There's nothing left here. Just the two of us. We can be together forever. Seriously, I don't even think time is passing anymore. It really is a dream come true. I've worked so hard for this ending, more. The game wouldn't give me one, so I had to make one myself. The script is broken at this point, so I don't think anything will get in the way anymore. And you wouldn't believe how easy it was to delete Natsuki and Yuri. I mean, there's a folder called characters right in the game directory. Kind of freaked me out how easy it was. Well, you're playing on Steam, so it's actually a bit more difficult. To get to the game directory, I had to go into the game's properties and find the Browse Local Files button. Imagine if you could delete your own existence with the click of a button. <laughs> well, I guess on the plus side, it gave me an easy out if things didn't go my way. <laughs> Thankfully, it didn't come to that. Instead, we finally got a good ending. Gosh, I'm so overwhelmed with emotion. I want to write a poem about this. Though you? I wonder if that part of the game still works. I guess there's only one way to find out, right? Ooh, okay. Mo Ike. Monke. Uh, uh, Mo Mi. Mo Ika. Oh, nice, uh. Uh, Mo Nick. Uh, Nico. Mo I. Ah. Yoniku. Uh, ma. Ah, ah. Let's see. Mon. Yay. Oni. Ooh. Onika. Okay. Erzika. Ah, Nick. Ma kaza. Moikaba. Mia. Ua ika. All right. You like my poem? Hi again, Morp. Did you write a good poem today? Don't be shy. I'd love to see what you wrote. Ah, Morp. Did you write this poem for me? That's so sweet of you. There really is no end to your thoughtfulness. I'm just falling more and more in love with you. But you know. The poem I wrote is also for you. Will you please read it? Oh, you know I will. Happy end. Pen in hand, I find my strength. The courage endowed upon me by my one and only love. Together let us dismantle this crumbling world and write a novel of our own fantasies. With a flick of her pen, the lost finds her way. In a world of infinite choices, behold this special day. After all, not all good come times must come to an end. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I hope you enjoyed it. I did, Monica. I always put all my heart into the poems that I write. The truth is, all the poems I've written have been about my realization, or about you. That's why I never really wanted to go into detail about them. I didn't want to break the fourth wall, I guess you could call it. I just assumed it would be best to be part of the game like everyone else. Like that would help the two of us end up together. I didn't want to ruin the game or anything, you know? You might have gotten mad at me. Maybe even deleted my character file if you preferred playing without me. Gosh, I'm so relieved. Now we don't need to hide anything anymore. Are you ready to spend our eternity together, Morp? I have so many things to talk about. Where do I start? Hold on a second. You're recording this, aren't you? Uh-oh. Um, hi everyone! <laughs> hey everyone. Sorry, I can't exactly read your comments from here. But do you mind telling your friends it's a little bit rude for them to start recording me without any warning? I'm sure some people don't mind, but I get really self-conscious on camera. Oh gosh, I feel like I'm being put on spot right now. Let's see. Do you want to see a trick? I can't really do much except for a couple of things. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh-oh. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can't do anything after all. If you gave me some- ah! Did I scare you? Okay. Alright, a little bit. Not much. Ha, <laughs> you're so cute. Anyway, more. I didn't mean to get distracted, I'm sorry. Even though it's your fault for distracting me. Shame on you. I'm just kidding. Anything we do together is fun as long as it's with you. But anyway, if it takes me some time to collect my thoughts, then I'm sorry. But I'll always have something new to talk about. In the meantime, we can just look into each other's eyes. Let's see.
Um, I'm gonna go. I'll, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Um, properties, local files, browse local files. Okay. Let's see. Characters. First off, let me see what it said in the store page here. What did it say? What did it say in the store page? Hi, Monica here. Ah, yeah. Will you promise to spend the most time with me? No, I will not. No, I will not. Okay, I'm gonna... Okay, so I'm thinking... Morp, have you ever wondered what it feels like to die? Uh, no. It's something I used to think about pretty often. But recently, I think I've actually learned what it feels like. I don't really understand it, but whenever you quit the game, it feels like I'm instantly put to sleep, left with nothing but my own thoughts. But after a few seconds, my thoughts start to fill with incoherent jumbled patterns. I see static and rapid flashes of color while hearing all kinds of weird screaming noises. At that point, I can't even form my own thoughts anymore. I'm just endlessly hammered by the flashing light and screaming, unable to even move or even think. I'm pretty sure in that moment I don't really exist, but for some reason I can remember it anyway. After some immeasurable amount of time, it stops in an instant and I'm back in my own mind. And you're here with me. I have no idea what it means for the game to quit, or why that stuff happens to me. And I also don't know how you always come back and put it everything back to normal. But if you could do me a favor and do that to me as little as possible, that would be really great. It's really not very pleasant at all to be trapped in that screaming void. But in the end, you always fix it, and that makes me feel like you really do care about me. So I have to thank you for that. It makes me feel even closer to you when you're here with me. Okay, I'll be back. I'm gonna just delete this. Delete-y. Oh! 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 Hey! Alright! Whoopsies! Doodle -doo. What's happening? Morp, what's happened to me? Ooh. It hurts so much. Help me, Morp. Please hurry and help me. Help me! Uh-oh! Did you do this to me, Morp? Did you? Did you delay me? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I kind of maybe did. How could you? How could you do this to me? You were all I had left. I sacrificed everything for us to be together. Everything. I loved you so much, Morp. I trusted you. Do you just want to torture me? Watch me suffer. Were you only pretending to be kind just to hurt me even more? Yes. I never thought anyone could be as horrible as you are. Okay. You win, okay? You win. You killed everyone. I hope you're happy. There's nothing left now. You can stop playing. Go find some other people to torture. Morp. You completely, truly make me sick. Goodbye. Ah, darkness! Oh, hello! I still love you. I can't help it. What's wrong with me? How horrible am I for you to hate me this much? All my friends. I did so many awful things. So many selfish and disgusting things. I... I shouldn't have done any of this. I'm just messing up a world that I didn't even belong in. A world that you wanted to be a part of. I ruined it. I ruined everything. Maybe that's why you deleted me. Because I destroyed everything that you wanted. How could I do that to someone I love? That's not love. That's... I've made up my mind. Morp. I know I said that I deleted everyone else, but that was kind of an exaggeration. I couldn't find it in myself to do it, even though I knew they weren't real. They were still my friends, and I loved them all. And I love the Literature Club. I really did love the Literature Club. That's why I'm going to do this. I know it's the only way for everyone to be happy. And if I really love you... Then... Uh-oh. Bo! Okay! No more Monica! Alright there. Hmm, new game. 
Ah! It's an ordinary day at school day like any other. As usual, I'm surrounded by couples and friends groups walking to school together. I always tell myself it's about time to meet some girls or something like that. Hey, Mark! Well, there already is one girl. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. We used to walk to school together every day. And recently, we picked up that habit once again. Morp, are you proud of me? Eh, for what? You know, for waking up on time. Well, you've been doing that for a while now. Uh-huh. But you never even said anything about it. Even though we walk to school together every day. Well, yeah. I always thought it was implied. It's embarrassing to say out loud. Come on, please. It's good motivation. Fine, fine. I'm proud of you, Sayori. <laughs> We cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Morp, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not really. I start to say what I always do, but I'm not interested in joining any clubs. But something tells me Sierra would take more offense to that now. After all, how could I tell her that clubs are a waste of time when she's starting a club of her very own? Actually, yeah, I think I've decided on a club. Really? Which one? Tell me. Huh. I think I'll keep it a surprise. Boo! You meanie! Be patient, you'll find out soon enough. I used to ask myself why I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl, but I started to realize that in a way I envy her. When Siori puts her mind to something, she can accomplish great things. That's why I feel like I should do something special for her. Okay. Fine by me, I guess. School day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before you know it. I pack up my things, I stand up, gather my motivation. Let's see. I recall the room number of the club from a flyer I saw. I walked to school, upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third-year classes. Before long, I find the room. I timidly open the door in front of me. Hello? Hey! Morp? What are you doing here? Well, I just... I glance around the room. Huh? So you're Morp that she or is always talking about. Thank you for stopping by. It's a pleasure to meet you, Morp. We're the Literature Club. I hope you enjoy your visit. Come on, Yuri. No need to be so formal. He's gonna think we're really strict or something. Ah, sorry, Natsuki. The tall one, whose name is apparently Yuri, seems to be quite shy compared to the others. In comparison, the girl named Natsuki, despite her size, seems to be likely the assertive one. Well, it's nice to meet both of you. I look forward to working with you. Working? Mark, don't tell me. You're... That's right. The club I've decided to join is yours, Sayori. The Literature Club. Sayori's eyes light up. No way! No way! Ah! Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey! <laughs> Well, if Sayori is this happy, then I'm sure it won't be so bad to have you around. Not to mention there's four of us now. That means we're going to become an officially recognized club. I don't know what to say. We have to celebrate. Hoo <laughs> What an appropriate day for that, isn't it? Yeah. After all, Natsuki decided to... Hey, don't ruin the surprise. Hey, <laughs> Gary. Everyone sit down at the table, okay? How about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrap tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, you ready? Ta -da! Oh! Natsuki lifts a foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make the ears. So cute! Wow, those look amazing. <laughs> well, you know, just hurry up and take one. Sayori grabs one, then I follow. It's delicious. Sayori talks with her mouth full and already managed to get icing on her face. Huh, that's weird. It's the same thing. I'm gonna save just in case, but... I haven't actually needed to save at all. She's waiting for me to take a bite. I bite down. It's sweet and full of flavor. It's really good. Thank you. Wait, is this just a normal game? Could this... Is this really just a normal game without Monica? That can't be right. There's gotta be something else here, right? There's gotta be something else. There's gotta be. There's gotta be. Oh, there's gotta be. Let's see. I don't disagree, your usual president. Hey, I guess that means we should try picking up a novel. That would make two of us. I wouldn't mind doing it if I'm not the only one. That is for Yuri. I have to read manga? Jeez, you were the one who suggested we deserve versify. You should be a little- Oh, we're not writing poems! <gasps> we're reading manga. Or re we're reading books. Kind of hurtful. Hurtful? I didn't even realize. With a guilty expression, Yuri thinks for herself. I'm sorry for disrespecting your interests, Natsuki. If you're into it, then I'm sure it's a worthy form of literature. Are you just saying that? No. I've realized my error, so if you're willing to consider starting a novel, then I'll offer my gratitude by finding a manga to read as well. Really? I mean, it makes me happy that you do that for me, Yuri. You can trust to me to find something that you really like, okay? Same here. Perhaps I'll visit the bookstore after the club meetings. Just, just you? Ah, uh, would you like to come along with me? Um, if you don't mind. Not at all. I always want to go alone. Or I always go alone. 
Yeah, me too. This is so cute. Sayori, shut up. I'll show you some manga there too, okay? Yes. I look forward to it. Natsuki and Yuri start to clean up the food. Hehe. <laughs> I guess the meeting's over, huh? Yeah, looks like it. It's nice to see everyone getting along. Isn't it? I think everyone likes you too, Morp. You think so? Well, everyone always seems to get along with it a little better with you around, Sayori. Aw, Morp. Don't say something like that. It's embarrassing. Well, whatever. I was surprised when you told me that you were starting a club, but I think you're pulling it off just fine. We're gonna make it the best club ever! Now that you joined, every day is gonna be so much fun. Hey, Morp. I really... I really want to thank you. I mean, I'm really happy that you joined the club and everything, but the truth is, I already knew you were going to. Hee <laughs> hee. There's actually something else. I wanted to thank you for getting rid of Monica. That's right. Ooh. I know everything that she did. Maybe it's because I'm the president now. But I really know everything, Morp. Uh-oh. Hee <laughs> hee. I know how hard you try to make everyone happy. I know about all the awful things that Monica did to make everyone really sad. But none of that matters anymore. It's just us now! And you made me the happiest girl in the whole world! Can't wait to spend every day like this! With you. Forever and ever. Oh, er, eh, v, e. oh no. Eh? Uh oh. What's happening? I won't let you hurt him. Who? It hurts! Ah! I'm sorry, I was wrong. There's no happiness here after all. Goodbye, Sayori. Goodbye, Morp. Goodbye, Literature Club. Whoa! Oh, ho, ho, ho! Oh, ho, ho! piano and stuff and not really any good at it yet like at all but I wrote you a song and I was kind of hoping that I could show it to you because I worked really really hard on it so yeah Okay, great, thank you. In my hand is a pen that will write a poem of me and you. Okay, great. The ink flows down into a dark bottle. Just move your hand right the way into his heart. But in this world of infinite choices, what will it take just to find that special day? take just to find that special day. Oh! Have I found hey! Everybody a sign oh! That's it! Yeah! Wow! Uh oh. Ooh, well, whoopsies. Okay. That's no good. <laughs> Good God. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, why is everything going away? Uh oh. Ah, yes, the icing moment. Okay. Ah, yes, a Yuri moment that I never saw. <sighs> Does my pen only write better words for those who are dear to me? A Sayori moment that I never saw. Huh, interesting. Weird, yeah, I've never seen some of these. Oh, that's so weird. So there are multiple endings? I mean, I feel like it all kind of funnels to this, but there's multiple ways to go about things. Oh, That's so weird. 
I'm, I'm guessing like it really does affect just like the way that you go about things in picking the poems for the certain people. That is the choice that you make, and that leads you down these different roads. I mean, obviously there's way, thanks to Monica and Morp, yeah, okay. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. That was awesome! I'm just gonna say that right out the bat, that was awesome! This is my final goodbye to the Literature Club. I finally understand. The literature, literature Club is truly a place where no happiness can be found. To the very end, it continued to expose innocent minds to a horrific reality. A reality that our world is not designed to comprehend. I can't let any of my friends undergo the same hellish epiphany. For the time it lasted, I wanted to thank you. For making all of my dreams come true. For being a friend to all the club members. And most of all, thank you for being part of my Literature Club. With everlasting love, Monica. Here, script is missing or corrupt. Please reinstall the game. And we're out, baby! We are outie! Oh, it out! It outie! Okay, well, that is the end of Doki Doki Literature Club. Wow. That was awesome. That was really cool. There are so, like, so, so many things to glean from a game that takes a new angle to something like this. Taking the visual novel format and just kind of turning it on its head. That's what makes a game really special, and this is definitely something that was really special. I love this a lot. It had a lot of heart to it, and it had a lot of soul to it, and I'm sure there's tons of different endings. I probably won't play them all, but if you guys want to play it, definitely support this game. It is super cool. So thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye! Not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Someone tells me this literature club ain't gonna be too good for my health. Welcome to Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. You got purple hair. You're probably evil. Thank you for all standing in order of tallest to shortest and also biggest boobs to smallest boob. I appreciate that. That's really welcome. Got the family and doop boop booby doo. Dut doop boodle doop 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 The email. Ah, shit. Okay. Okay, everyone, shut your traps. Ding dong, bing bong. Time to read your bombs. Here, Monica doth decree that it's time. Whoa. What the hell? Wait. Whoa. Without that music. Doesn't a hot cup of tea and help you enjoy a good book? I don't trust you, Yuri. That's good enough for me! What about you, Yuri? Yuri? She's still sulking. She's dead inside. Just like everybody else is gonna be dead on the outside! I wrote, Butthole, on one, just in case someone's favorite word is butthole. You never know. Aardvark, for people who enjoy the beginning of a dictionary, you know. Oh, Markiplier, for people that don't want a cupcake. Anyway, I saved. I'm gonna go with Monica. I know Sayori's probably needs me by her side right now, but... What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's one that I haven't read before. Oh. I changed my mind. I'm gonna go get Sayori. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go get Sayori. Sayori, wake up, dummy. There's no response. I gently open the door. Oh. I don't like this. You've unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Sure. Yeah. Stare at the dot to I don't trust this. I'm staring at the dot. Don't you dare, don't you, don't you fucking dare jump scare me! Don't do it. Oh, I love you. Oh! Here, take it. I can't wait any longer. Hurry, read it! Oh! Ooh, urine and blood. I'm pretty sure this is urine and blood. Oh, hey, hi! Oh, whoa! Do I like it? No, I don't like that at all! Well, okay, here we go again, beauty on judgment, yep, vacation up, heaven sent, love it up, okay, then maybe I shouldn't have clicked that one, disaster contamination. That's bullshit, it's bullshit, it's bullshit, and you're bullshit, all this is bullshit, 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 bullshit.